can we celebrate this? This is David. Hi, thank you so much. Come on, can you just go ahead and pray? Zede Brahandi Vezula Kaban de Brohoso Combanda Mante Elamante Fecoso Combarande Cababa Baba Baba Bosota Rande Bocoso Tebelendi La Brahande Sevenege Balandi O Manda Brahata Saba Baba 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 Le breghe son de lege di la mande brohova siga bande Rada sa kaba ba mante bova siga lante Ronzo velenge di na mande monomoso corondo volodo covolodo covolodo E la mande va di la manto sepe bebe 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 Cabora di atassa pante Come on in your sitting position. Can you be a little bit more fervent? The Lord has called us unto Himself. Ready, ba 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 ba. Shata ka ba 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 ba. Rati ele mana mante belege di na mando baraga di la mande le belege di na mande na mande na mande na mande na mande na mande na mante. Ele mama ne mama mamo mama mame. Asige mane la mante barani la manto barani la mande. Ele mame 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 mame. Barakoso barande belege di la mande barogoso ko ba ba ba. Oh baraka bahasa talaba. Thank you. 
rise to our feet tonight as we bless the name of the Lord. Bless the name of the Lord. Lift your voice and give him praise. Lift your voice and give him praise. Jumetaka paro seva sana caprato sebe macapanius. Diva sabina copena caria sapara tapi boco tepata. Zipa compro fasana tapi co sebe barata capina tacos. Oh, we bless you, Lord. 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 Rapo seven aka prashi dama kapro pena kape nako si papa ta ta. Di kapara savata ko prefele ta dis kapro fala ta. Japan Andre eso pe makabina katoria salves. Vesho braka di kapra su se kapara si ko prafa la kadias. Jaka prova sena pandes kap ela preko seva la praka ias. Jaka teko prafa seda balakam prateko seva patai. We bless you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. Can you raise your voice and give him praise? Raise your voice and give him praise. Raise your voice. Let's come before his gates with thanksgiving, with thanksgiving, with thanksgiving. Nika para sava sombre ka di cobra ka zibala ka patos. Yes. Jaka prafa da ke sabra fa la comba babata ka babata. Nika braso le ka braka saka la ka dia sapi la ka pro ka sa. Ifa la bababa ka braka siga la ka di sapara ta ke sombe ka. Jeka prava supre ka sila ga bena ka bro te japa pa dias. Rata ka bo sebe la ka dia tapi la ka bebo sepre ka fa dias. Ia ka pa te fora pa pa te brasi za ka che ka tombe la ta he. Rata pa mbe sope na ka fa te ta he. Blessed are you Lord. Blessed are you Lord. You are here and beside. Besides you, there is no other. Lika pase vale vaso perva la kadish ka papa de ka pata. Rakata ve sale bandish ko papata. We bless you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. From the rising of the sun to the setting of the same, your name is to be praised. Blessed be your name, O God. Lika pose perata papa ka braki para patom vasa pata ke pa. Lika pratis ko preka lika sape na ta te ka zia Rate va sopa na ka dia ta via ka roks ke pe na ta You are the high and lofty one The high and lofty one The ancient ageless God Lika baba ko si va ta ka pon de pe ra ta bo ke ria Lika baba da baba da bara ka te na ka bata A jia ko prefe le ka po te ve ma ka dia ta ke ta A lika bro ko si a ta pa 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 ra se ta ka ta te You are the lamb upon the throne le ka ba so be ba ka dia ta ya ka dia ta ba la ka dia so pra ka ta ta he vi lo ba mbe sha ba ka dia ta ya ta ba ba ka he you are the bright and the morning star le ko pa ra si va na si ba ba ko zi va la ka di ka ta he you are he that inhabits eternity you sit upon the circles of the earth and you behold men as grasshoppers what a mighty God you are what a mighty God you are can we come before his presence with thanksgiving tonight can we come before his presence with thanksgiving tonight reta baba ko beka vo seve la ka di ka da bata bata bo ka ba 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 ka ba ba ta Great things he has done and greater things he will do tonight. Can we exalt the Lord? Can we exalt the Lord? We magnify you in the heavens. Be magnified in the heavens. Be magnified in the earth. We magnify you in this place tonight. Rata se baba kado se bade ya tapi kata te ya ayako prenda so baba kadi ya tapi ya ta you are the everlasting God the eternal Father because se mata baba kadi ya tapi rata ya from generation to generation from age to age you are still the same you never change and the kapabu rata baba kabrate baba kopra pala kapapata baba kapata bala kapotaya. 
I give you praise. I give you praise. By him, therefore, let us offer the sacrifice of praise, which is the fruit of our lips. Giving thanks to his name. Giving thanks to his name. Can somebody give thanks to the Lord? 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 Thanks to the Lord? Don't wait for somebody to motivate you into thanking him. It was because of the price he paid on Calvary that we are standing here right now. It was because he suffered, he bled, and he died. That is why we have freedom. That is why we have redemption. Can we give him praise and say, Lord, we thank you. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we thank you. Rete ko si balakai, zata fate prakate ko si bamantakai, le kavate borate ska balakadi ata bikado si mata ke rata kanda, rete pano si bapa kati kata, yoka parasita valaka bota di kada. Look where the Lord picked us from. We are wallowing in our sins. We are wallowing as sons of disobedience. Le kabo te brakadi kada brakadi ata boy reached out and plucked us out of the hands of the wicked. One he translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. Lord, we bless you. We bless you. We bless you. Eleka bata diya, you are our kinsman redeemer. Eleka brato si ba makadi kada si ba kadi tabote. Rata beloko si akadi kaza balakadiya. Rata bo se ba mande kadi yataya. The scripture said, "Let the redeemed of the Lord say so." Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. We 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 acknowledge our redemption by thanksgiving, by thanksgiving, by thanksgiving tonight. Eleka baba do si yata. He saved us from a certain destruction. He saved us from being children of wrath, candidates of divine judgment. And look at Bratikatis. And he brought us into his bad chamber. He gave us a brand new name. He gave us a brand new name. The songwriter said, He waited until I came. He waited until I came. He loved you when you didn't care, but was patient till you came. He was patient till we came. The trajectory of our life would have been destruction if he had not waited patiently till we came. He did not give up on us. He did not give up on us. Can you express your gratitude tonight? Can you express your gratitude tonight that Jesus did not give up on you despite your many failures, despite the times you disappointed his, his trust in you? Some of us have strayed multiple times. But he came after you and plucked you out of the hands of the enemy. Oh, we thank you, Lord Jesus. Have a laka bate, rate pama ka braketa bala kopa bate. Asia pata mbrakato si baba kate. Ayaka brate tada bata baba ka baba ta baka ta. Rata baba ka baba ka baba ka bata baba ta. Rata tota pe moka baba ka brata sha baba ka brate baba ka. Rata banzo pe mande ka brote vele ka brate ka baba te. Lika pata kate ya rata ve sapande kaprate kalate katombe bakahe rata pe makabroke sofa late kate kata te pandata rakapaba kaproka de kalaka de katavana tapa bakahe ya tombe la kadiata he's been good he's been good he's been good he's been faithful he's been merciful la pe makabika don't see banaka ya tapo his mercies are new every morning new every morning great is his faithfulness and leka babo kabika shop Baka bate ka brate zapa maka di kata de tata feta tabata rata babo ka brasi nata ya rabo seme maka bre lulu ka baba ka bombe bahate vasi papa de brakombe mata baramba de brande la bako brate ka baba tuate baba tap. 
Likapateka tope patai. Ashi parate fanje sakadia tai. We are grateful, Lord. We are grateful, Lord. We are grateful, Lord. Eleka balakadia sabre kadile beko breka dia tai. Rakado si beke dia tabia tai. See what you've done. Look how you set us free. Eleka bate kadia tabra kadika dai. We are no longer slaves to sin. We are kobra kadia tabia kadia tabika da si apakata. Eleka bata bata tai. We are no longer slaves to fear. Eshi baba baka dia tabia tai. You made us your children. You called us your own. Eleka bata beka sopa tai. You cleansed us from our impurity. You cleansed us from all filthiness, and you gave us a garment of righteousness to put on. Ayaka pote pe bata breka di breka di bana bata. Ashebe bado breka di bata bata balaka dia tabata de kabora tape. Afeno to bapa kapata papa kabata dia tabraka dia tai. Rata bamu kaprope da papa kai. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And let up brandy kase ba mata ba makati. Rata ba 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 kap raka shop mata kita katante katane. Rava la kam brate kap rote ba makashi ba ba kate. Rata ba la krava se braka di brandy ko brate fasi batana. Rata ba ba kap raka di kabo para sate papa ta ta ta. We worship you. We worship you. We worship you. We worship. We worship. We worship you. Esi ba namba ba damba karumbre ende la kap papa tonde. Vi nata bata vaska bata brate ka bata bata kapota bika di kata teta. Vi na so thank you Jesus. Sape o kapapa ta. Bila katenya, laka fate kafa nate para siva neto siya katena. Rata papa kapra kateka sopa da kapra teka sapa tate. Leka bate pako siva laka dia tapa tapa tata te. Esa bra kateka rosi bate velepe na fatandi. Vora siza skabote leka bapa teka di kata bate kato te pepa kata ta. Lipara sope mande kasi vara ta. Ayaka brato siva baka dia tabria ta. Your name is to be al. Lord, we exalt your name in the sanctuary. We exalt your name in a sanctuary today. Be lifted high, be lifted high, be lifted high. You begin to thank him for his mercies. He said, This is of his mercy. It is of his mercies that we are not consumed. It is of the mercies of the Lord that we are kept safe, that we are kept secured. Iloko para si da shapan rakadi kasi akadi abrakadi zat zekete vele kabroko zepe mata ki katea rakade vela kabro debi na kabrate katombe bakadi asia papa baka 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 doi rada valo kabrake zepe mata bena kabata di katanda le kabrate kasavate kombi ta kate kata te kata rada pebe kabro si na sabote rakada brakade brako zepe bakadi tabata ya rakabo zepe mata benda Batombe bakwake ziyataya rata baba kapika barata baba kapata teka tonte venataya ashi baba kapika taya kapo sebataya. Can we get access by Thanksgiving tonight? Ele kabonze venate vana poka bravina soba makapate kaprate kapatombe pata. Lika prati sabi nata ke laka dias Ayata para se tafadi kate kote baba kante Laka siva nante zove naka vitas ka onte Rafa leida siya de ka bote le karya Lakwa ka boka boka bika baka bata binata braka di varate bani ataya Ajia papa baba bako profa laka niya Leka brandi braka sope baka bika tabrika talaka niya Ayata be baba baba ka baba ka bote perata venta Ayaka duata baba baba boka bika teis Rata baba kap brete baba kap baba kap baba kap batai asih bata boka be bata be makop be baka baba kap batan rata fena kopate isa batai we give you praise we give you praise we give you praise we give you praise esap be mata breka don be laka brafe laka baba tap laka tuate baba tuate Rakate braka zipa laka di zata tena Raka zo breka di ka biata biata ya Raka beka biato zebe maka brate ka bata di Asyata Raka beka 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 be
Sepe matake ya rata vasi bana kozi bata bi raka bosi bana kadia tak raka di kata mereka dosia ayaka baba kap mereka sebika dia sat bata dia ayaka baba kap brote memak kap brate balakop bata baka he rata baba kap brote melak kap brate kap baba tak mereka dosia ravata vasa ba lift your voice and give him thanks esi baba baka bonte benate kari support ya raka baba kap bosi biar dia kap para madi bra ondola pak kap bote biar Raka bo si bata kadi kata kita ya eya ko zi brandi kadi kata broko zia ala ka biya no si aba kadi ata brika no si biya ta ya raka bo ka de braka di kata braka di kata si baba ka de kata ya raka bo ka braka te braka di kala braka di braka no si raka baba ka baba ka baba ka ta ka ta kadi ya rapa so biya ta biya ka zia pata pata te kata ya raka be ko si biya ta braka de bala ka baba ka de aya pa ka baka biya ta braka di braka di apa ka di ata ya Rapa ko se pe mate baba ta be vo ko pote vanta ve la ka po se pe mata bi ka ta bi ka da be ya ka prate va la ko pa pu rata pina sha pa pa ka pro fe la ka bi via to pre fe la ka pa pa ka po ta rata pa ba ka pra to se pe mata ba de ba ka po te pe ro pa pa ka pa ta pa ka pa ta pa ta pa 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 ta Rake sombele katika teka tahe rata pe sopela katika skibana teka dia eleka po si brita si kase da bante la kwa keta kake kata kato ke kata kapa kata kata e rata sabe mandro kape na pante pura pala e zifati as kabonderi ata bika dia ta teka pote raka zubi ata baka baka brate la kapa ta baka braka dia ta e ala kapa braka di sabe baka 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 ta dia rata pate prate fa la kapa pote Petaya, can we spend five more minutes? Eka bota shaka dia and exalt the name of the Lord. Eleka bata bika tapata bata. He alone is worthy of our praise. He alone is worthy of our worship. He alone is worthy of our adoration. He alone is worthy of preeminence. Eleka papa che baka bia tapia taya. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever, forever and ever. Hasiva sobe laka brida sabi nakapondia. Lika pratis kabila katis kopra katisa zakade kato tebera tebe katika dia basia eleka proshe mende te 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 siba zeka pratis kabala kapera katia sande ayaka bronze bera kedi sibia kapa kapo tebe na tapra katia rakas kapa de brako ziba tatis kapa tate gaya reket ombre kati bara bate brako seven na tapa kaponte valaka prashi baba te braka so bate katia. Lika prato si barate skaba laka pate kania raka zeba kala kaba kato zie pata te kapote rapa kasi barate valaka pata pata da raka to breka di sa breka di laka brete sa popote kania reke fele braka to be baka di kata kato laka ya raka to se be maka di kata ya can you express your heart in thanksgiving to the Lord lika zia ta te badi ya kaba fadi kaba fadi ya kabon te dia ta ya rapa papa papa so pe baraka di sa brifa la Kombete teya ashiba na tombre kavila kabati karia tami kabro pele kapata na rava tombre bele kabu papa kapapa tapa na taya. Bika taketo bela kasi prate katenda sateta rata taka taka tata taka taka tata 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 raka pote bela kapra faska pe bata kateko prape taka tan rata viso bela desa dia kateka di kombre ande la kape kasha dia kopata raka visa bela de babu kapena ayak raze sa bela kradi kapote be braka ya avito papa kapra kesha bate kateka tompe kateka taya raka bosi bana te paka di braka dos. Sebabaya rakat dosia karya tak sibia tak baba kat bosi dia tak beka tak tengkat ana rapali kasu beka di prakat dia sabria tak beka tak ya ayah kat bosi bela karya tak prakat dia balat ya rapaso beka dosi bela kat di kata tak dia tak tak patah patah ana rako sibia tak prakat do beka di prate baba kat di kat prato le baba kat papa kat patah Reketon ziba la kadi kadi ya ta ya ta ya rakabe sobe ya kadi ya kadi ya ko seba la kadi ya ta ya aleka brako si ya ta baba kadi ya ta ya aleka bata kadi kata bara ta ya at this time can you begin to release your expectation for the service aleka brate ka soba ta can you tell him and say Lord come for me in this service aleka brate ka soba kadi ya ta ya ta ya there are services and there are services there are meetings and there are meetings there are certain meetings you will know that that meeting is your own is your own. 
can you lift up your heart and talk to God and say, Lord, come for me tonight. By your word, come for me tonight. I will not be satisfied by just being a statistic in the service tonight. Lord, I want something. I want something definite. I want something tangible tonight. Don't let me go back the same way I've come tonight. Your expectation will determine what you receive. No expectation, no testimony, no expectation, no delivery. Can you begin to create expectation? Peradventure, you enter the empty without anything in your heart that you are expecting from the Lord. Peradventure, you came here just to look at the face of the man of God. Can you begin to correct that error now and say, Lord, I want to touch you tonight. I want something definite to happen to me. The course of your life can be radically altered by what God will do in your life tonight. Only if you can have expectation, only if you can stir up your heart with open heart and you are looking up to him and say, Lord, come for me, come for me, come for me tonight. Lord, come for me, come for me. I know I have been in many services. I know I have attended many Bible studies but Lord tonight, tonight, let it be my night let it be the night where I enter into reality let it be the night where I touch something and I know that I know that I know that my life will not remain the same Sika prate la caprate co se benata cadia, a yaka bracadia sabricadi sabana teca botania, raca siva la cacata cateca tabricadi catatina, lica bratis copa na teca dia capratela, a yaka babacadia tabicada. I will not be carried away by the sound, I will not be carried away by people I'm sitting close to. Lord, all I came is to seek your face, and la cabratis capata be attire. Find me in this service, Jesus. Find me in this service, Jesus. Jesus, find me in this service, Jesus. A yaka babaka broca si balacadia tabata de caton de becadia, a sibre te caton de betadia kaya. Some of us have come to this service like that daughter of Abraham that was bound for 18 years. A leca baca sibre cadia tabaca botate. But Jesus found her, Jesus found her in that service. A leca babaco desca batabataya taya. I don't know the situation your life has been in. A leca bato te cateca tabarataya. I don't know the mountains you have been confronting or the battles you have been fighting can you beg the Lord and say come for me, come for me in this service find me Jesus, find me in this service during the service a lot of things will be going on angelic traffic will be going on can you beg the Lord and say Lord don't let me miss my encounter don't let me miss that portion that you have prepared for me don't let me miss the allocation that is mine some people come from service for services week in week out week in week out they never touch what God prepared for them in those services can you beg the Lord it doesn't matter whether you're just a member. It doesn't matter whether you're just a worker. God can do something new. Can you set your gaze on Jesus? Set your gaze on Jesus. Set your gaze on Jesus. Eleka brita sabamata beka diatapia. Alaka baka so beleka diatapia. Aleka bata kate kata te kata. Awaka de brakato se beta diata. It's either Jesus touches you or you touch Jesus. Eleka baba ka diatapia. It's either I touch Jesus or Jesus must touch me. Eleka brako se baka brake diata. One way or the other, there must be a touch. I want a touch, Lord. 
Rabade ko prakati kasamanda toy. La baba kababa kabrati katozia. Rapa kabrakadi prakadi sabama ta bekonze. Leve de brevele kabombeni kabrati kasitai. Baba kababa kabrose vele tabi matate. La kwate perase sake brati kasila tate katote. La kata kate kata biatai. Allah kabraka di kata on the tatai. Allah kabraka di satatai. There is an enemy of encounter. It is called familiarity. It's called familiarity. Kapi la katos yatai. You already know the routines of service. And the kabote diasa. You know after the prayer is going to be worship. After worship is the word. After the word announcement. And your heart has been closed to the possibility of a shift. To the possibility of an encounter. Because you have become familiar. You have become familiar. Can you begin to tell the Lord? I drop every notion. I drop every preconceived notion. I open my heart to the possibility that you will touch me. That you will do something that is unusual. That you will break out of the routines of the service in order to reach me, Lord. Lika brates kabad la kadia ta mekai, ele kabakadia ta yakadosia. There is going to be deliverance in the service tonight. There is going to be healing in the service tonight. There are going to be encounters in the service tonight. Can you beg God and say, Lord, may I not miss that portion that you have allocated to me? May I not miss my encounter? Whether I'm following online, whether I'm here on site, ele kabrato si bata breka de baka bata te kata de kadia ta ya, ala kabade bato se. Memanda bamaka bekasi ta ta te na ta te pa ta te ala kwate broko zeba bara sebi ya ya. Many of us have come for many services casually, and we have not received anything. We have not received anything. Esa baka bekati ya ta ya. How long will you continue like that? That is the way men become wasted. They yakabate bata ya. They are exposed to the atmosphere of God's presence for years, and He doesn't do anything to them because they come with an empty heart, a heart devoid. Of expectations, a heart devoid of the belief and faith that God can do something for them in that service. A pabako pabeka sebiatai, a rabato sebiata balabaka biata babaka babaka bato sebiata babai. Rakate kasabaka di kata lakadia sai. Rakade sabala kadia ta brakadia tai. Eleka bakadi kadosia. Yakato sebe lakadia. Candles of men that have gone off are going to be lit tonight. Eleka brasikate kate brakadi kata de. It is desire. It is desire that we attract divine attention in your direction this service. Eleka brato seba bakadi ka brate lakabata tai. Rakazo brakadi kada bata bakadia ta bikata batai. Can we be like that woman? with the issue of blood that is said in our heart if I may but touch the hem of his garment I know I shall be made clean somebody can even say in their heart if, if reverend can walk close to where I'm sitting it will be a sign that God is set to do something in my life and God will decide to honor that expectation Rakaso vele kabi kata setai, rata bana kabri kate le kape na tababa kati. Rakete kete kete be kadi kata brakadi kata tai. I've not come here for a religious exercise. I've come here to fellowship with tangible realities. Le kabrate kabala kadi yesabatai. I've not come to to mark attendance. I've not come to to fulfill all righteousness. I've come because there is a conviction in my heart that something can happen to me that will alter my life. Ya kabrasi tabata. Rata baka bala tapi ya tay. Rata baka berate kaba baka neka daba tabala kada ya. Asha baka 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 bara kabi ya kay. Lift your voice and pray. Lift your voice and beg the Lord. Lift your voice and beg the Lord. Ape kade sab baka baka bata ya. Say find me, find me. Asha di mana tabi kada ya. As you are moving in this congregation tonight, as your word is coming forth, let something come for me. Baka bose baka 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 Bye-bye. There is a question you have had in your heart for two years that can be answered in this service. There is something you have been trusting God for six months that can come into your possession in this service. Only if your eyes can see, only if your heart is open. Rata Baba Kabata Ikata Balaka Bota Nibana Rabaloko Zebamata 
Sabrakavana Tabaka Day, a sheep up a papa 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 Jesus will be walking through this service. Jesus will be passing by. Jesus will be passing by tonight. Are there people that are determined to touch him? Are there people that are determined to touch him with expectation? It's not enough to sing in the worship session. It's not enough to pray in the prayer session. The goal is that you will get to that point where you contact him. When you contact him when you will contact him ayaka brate balako sebe maka brate kata tikata ayaka brato sebe mata bena katikata ba let something fresh happen to me lord let something new happen to me lord esi bara e bana ka brate baba ko baba ka bote bena tabata some of you, you have placed God in a box. You have placed God in a box and say, if God doesn't do it like this, that means God is not in the service. If this and that does not happen, that means Jesus is not here. You have just cheated yourself out of encounters. You have cheated yourself out of divine interventions. In this atmosphere, anything is possible. In this atmosphere, things can be shifted, mountains can be moved, the valleys can be exalted. Crooked paths can be made straight. Only if your eyes can see it, only if your heart is open with expectation. That your brother that you have been praying for to be saved. His salvation can be sealed in this service. That oppression in your family can come to an end tonight. Only if there is expectation. It doesn't have to align with the team of the service. God can bypass the team for the service and do something unusual. God can break out of our routines and touch somebody in need. In the day that Jesus healed that daughter of Abraham who was sick for 18 years. The scripture said that the Pharisees were angry because it was not, it was not following protocol. They said on the Sabbath day, why will he do this? But Jesus saw a daughter that was in need, in need, in need and he reached out and touched her. Can you break every mold you have used to confine God and say God can only do like this, God can only operate like this? That except it's a healing service, that is when healing can take place. Except we tag the service deliverance, that is when deliverance can take place. Except we target the move of the spirit, that's when the move of the spirit can take place. What box have you put God inside? Can you begin to break it out and say, Lord, I open up to every possible. Possibility. I open up to every reality that you are making available. As Generate hunger for an encounter tonight. Generate expectation. It doesn't have to be healing service for, for your sickness to be healed. Jesus can do healing. Even in a wedding ceremony, it doesn't matter the place or the time. It's not limited by the team we give the service. 
chains can break in this atmosphere. Chains can break. Chains can break. Can you place a demand? Can you place a demand? Can you place a demand? Zephenandra sika de kalakadi ayaka bate kata de katante alaka brakadi atai alaka brakadi asabi atai. The warfare around your finances can be terminated in this service. Alaka brate sabatai alaka baba kabi atabi atabatai ayaka brate skabi atai. Anything can happen. Anything is possible. Esaba baba 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 kabra ke sovela kabi katai. Can you beg God? Ayaka di I open up my heart. I will not miss the move of God in this service. I will not miss the move of the Spirit in this service. You can leave this service more anointed that you came in. You can leave this service more empowered than you came in. You may, you may have come in crippled. You may have come in, come in very, very weak and tired spiritually, but you can be rejuvenated. You can be revived in this service. It doesn't have to be called a revival service. God can reach you. Yeah, you are. God can reach you right where you are. God can reach you right where you are. Whether you are online, you are on site. I will not allow routines to cheat me of my encounter. I will not allow routines to cheat me of my encounter. Let the channels of my spirit be open. 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 That will not be like Jacob that said the Lord was in this place and I knew it not the Lord was in this place and I knew it not that will not be your passion brother that will not be your passion sister beyond what happens physically Lord I plug myself into the realm of the spirit my perception is sharpened my antenna in the spirit is, is switched on I receive the transmissions of heaven Beyond the words of the preacher, beyond the songs of the choir, I receive that which is uniquely mine. Lika brati kata 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 kai raba baba kamra te balakomba sita aja kabra kadi kada bata bata te kato te balaka braka te kata kati baka te braka te laka tata asha baba paka te baka ti ko vana ta raka sobe baka ria ta brika no si bara kadi brate sabata baka i tabata rata baba kabra te vasa te bara ta baba ta ya asi baba to te menda kato nda te kata te aja tada kati bara te brika no balaka di you are responsible for what you will receive tonight. You are responsible. You are responsible. Can you take responsibility? Can you take responsibility? If you don't get something tangible, it's not because God was not here. It's not because the man of God is not anointed. It's because your heart was not ready. Jesus wept over Jerusalem and said, Oh, Jerusalem, oh, I long to have gathered you under my wings, but you did not know the hour of your visitation. Jesus was there to touch them. Jesus was there to heal. It was there to set their captives free. But they did not know the hour of their visitation. Barata kate kate le kadote afita bata peta baka di kase kata kata kate ayaka braka di kata braka di akai can you make up your mind tonight I will not go back the same way I came ayaka baka di atabi atai I came in January nothing changed in my life I came in February nothing changed I came in March nothing changed Lord this is April do something definite in my life I thank you for the test 
testimony of other brothers. I thank you for the testimony of other sisters. But Lord, I want my own. I want my own. Lift your voice and pray. Lift your voice and pray. Lift your voice and pray. You are responsible for what you receive tonight. In la cabrate casibarate bracket is a batai. Yakabraka di kadikadai. Yakado si a tabatai. Beyond the words of the preacher, beyond the songs of the choir. Let me hear the sound of heaven. Let me hear the sound that can change me. Let me hear that word that can transform me. Let me receive that impartation that will shift me to another level. You that have been complaining about your prayer life. In this service, you can receive an upgrade. In this service, you can receive an upgrade upgrade in this service you can receive an upgrade can you cry to the lord a man does not have to lay hands on you if your expectation is strong enough you will attract something from the realm of god the presence of God is a place where people are changed, is a place where life are transformed, is a place where your weakness is exchanged for strength, is a place where your sickness is exchange for healing is the place your captivity is exchange for freedom are you desperate tonight are you desperate tonight are you desperate tonight are you desperate tonight Holy Ghost, find me. That's it. Find me in this service. Salikata Kadea. Adia Teta Sabata Ketanya. Aya Kadika Biata Biataya. Yakadia Taya. You came for Zacchaeus on a certain day like this. Come for me. Come for me. You said to Zacchaeus, rejoice because I will come to your house tonight. Eleka Baba Kabra Kedia Kadika Bata Nikataya. Aya Baba Kabaka Baka Baka Bika Poka Batataya. I am no 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 come on Saturday. Likata sabate kabrake ayakasi bata ikabakani. It's not good enough to be in the presence of God. Ayakani sanatai and you go back the same way. Ayakabrake kata kani atami atai. Leka bata bata tia. Jesus, keep your hands upon me. Jesus, put your finger upon me. Jesus, touch me tonight. Jesus, touch me tonight. Jesus, touch me tonight. Jesus, touch me tonight. I look beyond the man. I look beyond the physical realm. I see my man the Saba man the Nakani Kataya. I yaba the Kabada Taya. Open my eyes to see you. I yaka baka the Kadabada. Open my eyes to see you tonight. I baba kaba baka baka singa taya. I baba kaba baka bataya. Jesus, do not pass me by. Yetela bakaria tame kani. Eleka brates kaba tabi kana kani tay. Eleka brates kaba tabi kana tane konte tay. Laka brake nasia tay. Ayaka bakaria tama kani tay. Ayaka kaka kate 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 kate. Activations gonna happen tonight. But are you expectant? Are you expectant? Ayade papa kapa papa 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 kazi tata tata tata. There are people all over the world. Their desire is that they can experience one service here. But here you are, you have been coming for 10 months and you have not trapped anything. Can you make up your mind and say, Today will be different. Today will be different. Today will be different. Jesus, touch me. Jesus, don't pass me by. Jesus, come for me. Come for me. Come for me. 
Jesus, 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 Jesus. Ayaka baba kabra cheka tala kaniyata. Zika na manando siga na. Ele mana sama na kaniyata longoza. Ele kabya dasi ya dasi ya. The Bible says it's a rewarder ordained that diligently seeking. Can you open up your to seek the Lord in the service tonight? Open up the powers of your spirit. Open up the powers of your heart. Open up the powers of your heart. Put your trust in him tonight. It's about to change your, your, your context. It's about to change your story. 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 For some of you, it's a garment that will be changed. It's your garment that will be changed. There'll be a change of garment. Familiarity is the enemy of encounter. Routines are the enemies of encounters. You are used to a particular way that God moves. But he said today I will come in a different way. I will come in a special way. Can somebody allow themselves to be carried by the river of the spirit? It's a river that you can't control. It's where the river takes you to that you go. Can you yield? Can you yield? Can you yield and say, Holy Ghost, carry me in this service? Carry me. Carry me. From the ground to mountains in the spirit. Carry me to the place of encounter. Carry me to the place of empowerment in this service tonight. Don't let me remain on the ground. Don't let me remain in carnality. Let my spirit man come alive. 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 The natural man cannot receive the things of the spirit. The natural man cannot receive anything from God. Holy Spirit carry me Oh, Spirit of God, Spirit of God, Spirit of God, Raise your voice and pray. Raise your voice and pray. Carry me to the place of encounter in this service. Carry me to the place where my word will come. Carry me to places in the spirit. Where two transformation takes place. Where encounter takes place. Where impartation takes place. Raise your voice and pray. 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 Don't be emotional tonight. 
services you have attended if you can make up your mind tonight and beg the Lord and say Holy Ghost carry me Holy Ghost help me I see that I there is something the Lord wants to accomplish in your life in this service before the foundations of the world in you you will be in a service like this can you plug in by the Holy Ghost can you connect by the Holy Ghost can you connect by the Holy Ghost I see that Holy Ghost, can a sister pray this prayer with all consciousness, with all seriousness? Ayaka bataya. There is a sister. Ayaka botaya. You have been shadowed for an encounter with the Holy Ghost tonight. Can you beg him as the Holy Ghost carry me? Ayade bata meka da. Carry me, carry me, carry me, carry me, carry me. I have been on the ground for too long. I've been a natural man for too long. I've been carnal for too long. This service. Let it make a shift in my life. Let it make a shift. 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 Let Lele kabra kasi mena kadiya sana batana rakata kato le bakate kata da vasata bana kati kata ne kato rakati bana kati sama nata ne kata a lot of things will happen tonight lele kabra teska batania it is there that I open to the spirit of God that we get those things that we take delivery of the things that God is piping in the service tonight lele kabra bako rasa baba kati kata nata 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 Rakate kadoseba, 
Yakadi Katabra Kato, El Kabata Kadi Katakato, El Kate Kati Katakato, Ayatra Basamin on Zanata, Oni Nabakariata, Anana Nasaka Kadi Kadabaka Babakatan, Raza Vanakadi Sabia, El Kabiata Ziata, Anakabakariata Bakariata Yakaria, Oni Mana Samanata de Kadakaria, Ayakabika Kariata Biata, El Kabata Katakataka, Ratabina Kadia, Anikabate Saba, Oni Gos, Ayakadia Sa. Don't leave me on the ground. Don't leave me on the ground. Carry me, carry me, carry me. Asiba na teka bote ne kaniya teta. Rade sebe di kanasiya ta baba kabo sebe na kabi katara kaniya. Ile kaniska ba. Set me upon upon my feet by your spirit. Ani kabrakeni. Let your spirit enter to me. Ani kabrakes kabata. Set me upon my feet in this service. Ani kabrakani ta. Ile kaniska baba kani kana. Ile kabrakani ta me kana rakani. Ile kabato sebe bakani ta. Ayaka baba kaba kani kana lakado tete na ta. I set a vatas kaba kani. I tell you, I tell you, a sebe vatas kini ta. What you receive. In this service is your responsibility. It will be a function of the alignment of your heart. Ile kabra kani kado breke ile kenya sabra kani ata ile kame kabra kani kado zia ile kabra kani ata biya tamba kani kani aya kabra kani kala kada bra kado la kata tala shata tamba sana bra kata te kata ta ile kata ta kata kata bela kata te kata kata ala kata bela kata bala kabra kani ata asote vena tamba kani asaba kani 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 ata ala kabra 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 kani kani ata ebe kabra 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 kada seba kani ata asepa rati kono Carry me, Holy Ghost. I Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, I yield, I yield, I yield, I yield. I open up, I open up. Let it come on to deep. 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 Ele kaba kaniya sabra kaniya paya kaniya tanya. Ele kiri 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 sabra kaniya tanya. Ikora sata bala kaniya sabra kaniya. Sekete kene kavota bara tapa bata ketai. Sete tete kete kato tebe la ketai. Rata basi mete kuni. Ele kaniya tavi kaniya. Ele kaba tasi bala ya. Aya kambi ya kaniya. Ele kaba kaniya tapa kaniya sane thala. Waba 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 kuzi bri kaniya sa. Lift your voice and pray. 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 Sebe de beto. Sebe de beto. Sebe de beto. Sebe de beto. Aye vada breke de leka da da vala kani sata. Ele kabri kado si ma mata de kaniya. Aye kabra de laka ba ba kani sata. Arra ba 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 kado sebe kani sata. Arra ba 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 kado sebe maka ba ba kwa ba ba kabo sata. Let men be carried tonight. Let women be carried tonight. On the wings of the spirit. 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 Seven, 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 seven,
Can you raise that cry? Raise that cry. Raise that cry. Let deep call unto deep. Let my spirit be open. Radia Suba Capati, Sebebe Radia Sabacabo, Radia Sutilibi Radia Sambo Cabo, 
Radabakabu sebe de bere be sabakabu sede dia sabakabu ati radi sababakabu ni baradia sakambu ti. Come on, can you pray? Can you pray? Sababaradia sade kambu sade baradia. O radaba kambu sedia de baradia sote lebe kabaradia sote. O Holy Ghost, irade bakambu sade bakabaradia sambu kambu. We angulate our hearts to the movements of the spirit. Saba kaba telebe radia sambo kopos. Irada ba sotelebe kambo sadia sotelebe radias. Irapa kaba sotelebe kambo sebebe kabos. Iradia sakapa leba rado saba mote. E saba ba kaba sade ba kambo telia. E saba ba ba kambo sebebe lebes. Sebebe Sambo, sebe kaduadias, ela bakade sade sambo borodos, e kambo telebe radias, sotelebe kambo sabaya. For where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Hey, sabakaye sambo, e rada bakade sebe lebes. Come on, can you pray? Can you pray? Agulet your heart to the movements of the spirit. Like our pastor said earlier on, the Lord is doing a touching. Oh, Sapa Kambo Sebe Kabua. Either you touch God or He touches you. Yes, Sapa Kambo Telebe Rodos. Elapa Kambo Sade Bakopo. Redebe Kaba Sapa Baba Kambo. The Lord of hosts, the King of glory, Yahweh's about, Yahweh's about. The Lord of hosts, the King of glory, Yahweh. The Lord of hosts, reveal your glory, Yahweh's power. So Lord, 
Yahweh, Yahweh, Yahweh. Yahweh, Yahweh. Say Lord of hosts. Yahweh. Yahweh is Yahweh The Lord of hosts, sign forth your glory. If truly you believe that the Lord of hosts is here, there is a way you position yourself. There's the way you position yourself. I beg you, position yourself rightly because he's truly here. Touch the hem of his garment. Hey. Oh. Close your eyes and engage. Hey. He's the Lord of hosts. Samuel 1 verse 11 Anna and her husband went to the temple to offer sacrifice their yearly doings when she got to the temple her mates okay let's read it can you take it backwards backward 
Still go backwards. Still go backwards. Still go backwards. Yes. So it was year by year when she went up to the house of the Lord that, that she provoked her. That is her. Her mate provoked her. Therefore she wept and did not eat because she was sad because of what she was going through. Verse 8. Then Elkanah, her husband, said to her, Hannah, why do you weep? Why do you not want to eat? And why is your heart grieved? Am I not better to you than ten sons? Verse 9. So Anna arose after they had finished eating and drinking in Shiloh. Now, Eli the priest was sitting on the seat by the doorpost of the tabernacle of the Lord. Verse 10. And she was in bitterness of soul. And she prayed to the Lord and weep in anguish. Verse 11. Then she made a vow and said, and said, O Lord of hosts, if you will indeed look upon my afflictions, of your maid, your, your maid servant, and remember me, and forget your maid servant, and not forget your maid servant, but will give your maid servant a male child, then I will give him to the Lord all the days of his life, and no razor shall come upon his head. She was burdened, but when she went to the temple, she recognized the Lord as Lord of hosts in the temple. She recognized the Lord as Lord of hosts. And she made a vow and she asked the Lord, if the Lord can look upon our affliction. Ooh. Today I want you. What? While I was praying, I was hearing that the Lord is going to restore. I don't know. The Lord is going to restore. Who survives in that category? Because that is why he gave me this sound. The Lord of hosts. He is present here. So it depends on you how you, you engage. How you position your heart. How you position your heart. So can you raise the sound? The Lord of hosts. The Lord of hosts. The King of glory. Yahweh, the Lord of hosts is here. Yahweh. Scripture says, wherever the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Oh, the Lord of hosts. Yahweh. The Lord of hosts 
is fixing Yahweh Sabaoth, the Lord of hosts, is touching Yahweh Sabaoth, he's redeeming. Oh, Yahweh Sabaoth, can you be grieved like Anna? And cry before the Lord of hosts. Oh Yahweh Sabaoth. Yahweh Sabaoth. Yahweh Sabaoth. Hey, Sebao, 
Lord, you're here. 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 Lord, you are 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 here. And as the river flows, it begins to bring everything to life. Is the life giving river. Oh, let it flow right here, right now. As the river flows, it begins to bring every dead thing to life. Is the life giving river? Yeah, as the river flows. To bring every dead thing to life is the life giving river. Oh, let it flow right here, right now. As the river flows, it begins to bring everything that's the life. It's the life giving river. Oh, let it flow right here. Right now, as the river flows, the river flows. The life-giving river, more than it for right here, right now. As the river flows, the river
the spirit. Pray in the spirit. The power of God is present to heal. The power of God is present to set captives free. Just pray in the spirit. Pray in the spirit. Take the next few minutes to just focus on the Lord. Tonight is a special night. God has great things in store for us today. Let's just fellowship. Let's just fellowship and draw strength from the Holy Ghost. Oh, what a night. What a time to come into his presence. What a great day and a great time to experience the power of God again, to experience the glory of God. Oh, just lift those hands in thanksgiving. Tonight, God is going to set captives free. Tonight, God is going to be releasing fresh unction. Tonight, God is going to be making His power and His glory known again. Strongholds of, of, of depression and fear are going to be broken. Guilt and shame are going to be rolled away. Tonight is a special night. Lift those hands and just appreciate the Lord for the great things that He is going to do. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of our God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You just help me take this song. You reign forever. Your name is ever great. great. You, you are, are the wisdom before time began. Please help me. You reign forever. Your, Your name is us. ever great. Thank you, Jesus. You, you are the wisdom before time began. You reign forever, your name is ever great. You are the wisdom before you reign, you reign, you reign forever, your name is ever great.
upon his people afresh tonight great grace is made available to us again by day we shall run through a troop by day we shall leap over the wall yeah yeah new strength and new wine as so, a spirit of God we give you thanks tonight we know you are here to do us good spirit of liberty blow in this house let your presence be felt let your power be known let the glory of Jesus be seen. Thank you, Father. Return all the glory to you. Return all the praise. Be exalted in this house. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Let's give the Lord a shout tonight. Hallelujah. Thank you so much. Praise God. Praise God. Please, we may be seated. I'm greatly honored to be in your midst tonight. I want to appreciate Mama and the leaders, the pastors in the house for this great opportunity to come and fellowship with you today. Uh, I spoke with my friend, Reverend Kess, and he told me that we are beginning a series on redemption today. I said, wow, that's the most exciting topic in the Bible. Amen. And so he gave me the privilege to come and start this wonderful teaching with you today. So I I'm greatly honored. Can we put our hands together for our pastor? I was actually calling to wish him happy birthday when I ended up being here today. Praise God. So I know that God has great things for us today. Hallelujah. Are we ready to learn from God's word? Ephesians chapter 1, we'll just begin from the very scripture that 
first addresses the issue of redemption in the writings of the Apostle Paul to the Ephesian church. And verse 7 specifically, Ephesians chapter 1 from verse 7, Paul was careful to fully explain redemption in the sense of telling us what exactly it is and how exactly it is accomplished in this verse. So it says, in whom we have redemption through what? His blood. So he tells us how redemption is gotten and tells us in whom we have that redemption and that is whom? Christ Jesus. It says through his blood and, sorry, in whom we have redemption through his blood and then he tells us that even the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. The first chapter of the book of Ephesians, for the sake of time, I won't go into so much, but just understand that the first chapter of the book of Ephesians explains a lot concerning our new position in Christ. Paul, in writing to the Ephesian church, was careful to explain to them some basic things about the Christian faith. Some basic things in relation to what Jesus has accomplished for us through his death and resurrection and the things or the blessings that now accrue to us on account of the finished work of Jesus. So if we go back a little bit to verse 3, he began by telling us that there is a new reality or there is a new position that is now true about every Christian. And that is that it says, Blessed be God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who had blessed us with what? All spiritual blessings were in heavenly places in Christ. And so it began this story by helping us recognize that there is such a thing called the spiritual blessings that are in heavenly places and that every believer in Christ is blessed with these blessings. Are you a believer? Talk to me. Are you a believer? Are you blessed? Now, it is very important that we understand that when it always comes to what Jesus has done for us, it is always described either from the position of a present continuous or a past tense. And so by that, what the Bible is trying to tell us simply is that every time you discover from scriptures what the Bible tells you about yourself in Christ, God is trying to tell you that that is actually who you are on account of what Jesus has done. So are there people who are blessed in the house today? The reason why this topic is very important to me especially, and why I consider it one of the most important topics, is that while we try to present to God's people their present realities in Christ, it is also very important that we recognize that there is also a system at work that is designed to deny Christians of the things that God has freely made available to them. And it is because of that system of delusion that we labor excessively to try to help God's people not to lose sight of these basic truths whereby Christ has made available to us everything that we need for life and godliness. Everything that is required for our liberty, our salvation, our deliverance. He calls it all spiritual blessings in Christ Jesus. Not something that is about to happen, but something that has already happened. But this is the challenge. That though we are talking about these things as beautifully as they are, there are many Christians who are not experiencing them. So the challenge comes from the fact that if I am not experiencing them, could that mean that maybe what happened was not sufficient? Or is it that there's something more that God requires from me? 
like us, we're going to make progress very shortly, we realize that God has designed the Christian life to function in such a way that the more we acknowledge what Jesus has done, the more real it becomes to us. Praise God. Is somebody still here? To help you understand that clearly, so that I'll come back to that, but just to give you a scripture. Philemon chapter 1 and verse 6. The book of Philemon is in the New Testament, and it has just one chapter. Hmm? So it's actually Philemon 6. But this is what it says, that the communication of thy faith may become effectual. The word communication there actually describes the exhibition or the expression of thy faith. In other words, your Christian life, as you exhibit it, it says it will become effectual. Let me rephrase. Forgive King James. You will more effectively live your Christian life. That's what it's just basically trying to say. So what will help you more effectively live your Christian life? It says it is the acknowledging of every good thing which is in you. Where? In Christ Jesus. Where do you have your redemption? In Christ Jesus. So what the scripture is basically telling us is here. That the more you acknowledge the good things that are in you in Christ Jesus... The more you, if the word acknowledge is actually a grammatical construct of two words, act and knowledge. So another way to put it is, the more you act on the knowledge of the good things that are in you in Christ Jesus, it says, the more effective the Christian life becomes. I believe that a generation of men are rising again on the earth who are fully grounded in what scripture describes as the, as the blessings of the spiritual blessings that you and I have in Christ Jesus. Because it tells us here that the more you know it and act on that knowledge, the more effective your Christian life becomes. Praise God. Is somebody stay here with me? We're talking about redemption. And redemption, according to scriptures, basically describes in simple terms... Our salvation experience in God, but not just the salvation experience, but the legal grounds upon which that salvation was obtained and the results that it has now produced in the life of the believer. I'll take that again. That our redemption basically describes our salvation experience in God. However, it is not just about our salvation experience, but the legal grounds upon which or the legal transaction that actually secured that salvation and the benefits or the blessings that you and I can now enjoy on account of that legal transaction. Praise God. That's what redemption basically is. So in a sense, we're trying to rediscover what Jesus did for us and the legal implications and why you and I can boldly rest on what Jesus has done for us as the only basis upon which you and I can experience liberty on all grounds. Praise God. Is somebody still here? That's basically what redemption means. And so scripture says, you and I have redemption in Christ Jesus through his blood and he calls it the forgiveness of of sins. So one of the th two, two things that we cannot help but talk about through this teaching is the blood and the forgiveness of sins, or more correctly, the remission of sins. Praise God. Are we together? I just did that as an introduction so that we can all be on the same page. So can I move, move on now? All right, beautiful. It was seen that the Apostle Paul labored extensively to teach and to get God's people grounded on these basic truths. If you read the book of Romans, the book of Ephesians, the book of Galatians, you will see that the, the basic confrontation that the Apostle Paul had against people who were preaching false doctrines were in relation to what Jesus had done. There were people who were trying to teach and make it seem like there's something else that people need to do other than what Jesus has already accomplished. Another way to put it, rather than building on what Jesus has already done, 
there were people who were trying to disregard what Jesus has done through his death and resurrection and make it seem that no, that one does not work. There's something else that is required. So Galatians chapter 3, Paul had to confront this. And I, I want you to see the way Paul wrote it because it's the most beautiful presentation of truth that I've ever seen from the sense in which Paul wrote. And what does he say? He says, O oh, foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you? Who has deluded you? That you should not obey the truth. This is the part I want you to see. Before whose very eyes Jesus Christ has been evidently set forth, crucified among you. Now this is the question. Galatia is not the same, or rather, this is the issue. Galatia is a completely different location from Israel. Hope you know that. Talk to me. Galatia is, according to this time frame, a particular location far away from Israel. However, Paul is saying that before your very eyes, you saw Jesus set forth, evidently set forth, he says, crucified among you. This is what is happening here in simple terms. Paul so taught about the death of Jesus that it became so real to the Galatian church that it was as if they were there when it was happening. I don't know if you are getting this. It became so real that Paul was trying to tell them that it was as if before your very eyes that you saw Jesus crucified. So who has now bewitched you? Why are you believing something else and making it seem? And more specifically, in this particular uh, case in Galatia, somebody was trying to teach that they needed to go back to the law of circumcision. And by observing circumcision, that is the only way they could truly be saved. So Paul was saying, what do you mean by that? As Jews that we were circumcised, it didn't profit us anything. So why do you not think after all that Jesus has done, you still need to be circumcised? You still need to do something else so that you can be saved. So Paul presented this truth. And when I saw it, I said, this is exactly how I trust that God would present the death and the resurrection of Jesus to you today. Praise God. That it will become so real to you that nobody will be able to shift you from this place of victory that Jesus has given to us. Let's keep reading. You understand where, why this is important? Paul now began to challenge them. This only would I learn from you. Receive, the Holy, receive you the Holy Spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith. Another way to put that is, on account of your understanding of the finished work of Jesus, did you not see that it brought about a release of the activity of the Holy Spirit? In other words, the Holy Spirit's activity amongst you is only on account of the fact that Jesus has made a way for the Holy Spirit to begin to function through his death and resurrection. You believed it and you saw the evidence of it. Are you so foolish? Having begun in the Spirit, he says, are you not made perfect by the flesh? Have you suffered so many things in vain, if, if it be yet in vain? Notice what it says in verse 5. He that ministered to you the Spirit and worketh miracles among you, doeth it by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith. And what is referring to there as the hearing of faith is the word of God in relation to what Jesus has accomplished for us. Another way we could just rephrase this is, Paul is just simply trying to tell us that you see the basis upon which the supernatural, the basis upon which the manifestations of the spirit that we enjoy, the basis upon which the liberty that you and I have in Christ is simply the fact that Jesus died, was buried, and he rose again, and that work that we refer to as the finished work of Jesus is the foundation 
for our liberty in Christ. Praise God. Is somebody still here? What Paul was basically trying to challenge the church about is that don't lose focus of what Jesus has done for you. If you want to experience God in his fullness, always take your mind back to what Jesus has accomplished. It says, by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. Why did Paul have to make that statement? Because it was a major challenge. These were people who had grown up in an environment where, where, where it would seem like the only way they knew to serve God was through the Jewish laws. And so that's all they saw. But now Paul is going out to the Gentiles and trying to tell them that, hey, those things that we did, forget it. It didn't produce any result. Rather, what has brought about the transformation that we're experiencing today is that many years ago, a man came by the name Jesus. He died. And through his blood, he says, we've obtained redemption, even the forgiveness of sins. And so they heard and put their faith in the finished work of Jesus. And they saw the power of the Holy Spirit. They saw the glory of Jesus. So Paul was not writing them to say, come, come, come. Let's, let's be real. When you saw the power of the Holy Spirit working amongst you, was it because you were circumcised? Definitely not. So if you want to see a continuation of this, no, you cannot continue in the flesh. You must continue in the spirit. In the spirit of the revelation. Permit me to say, of what Jesus has done for you. Hallelujah. Are we still together? There's a scripture that is terribly abused in today's church. And I'm going to show you something from there that will probably make you think a little bit. And it's from Revelations chapter 12 and verse 11. Well, let me start from verse 10. It says, And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of the brethren is cast down which accused them before our God day and night. And who is he talking about there? Who is he talking about? Who is the accuser of the brethren? Satan, the devil. Now, notice what it says in verse 11. And they overcame him. And who is the him they're talking about there? Satan, the devil. By the blood of the lamb. And what else? By the word of their testimony. And they loved not their lives unto the death. They overcame him how? By the blood of the Lamb. So many people have interpreted the scripture to mean that the way to overcome is that anytime you want to travel, anytime I'm in such vehicles and they pray such prayers, I'm always careful to either correct them or just turn away. In fact, sometimes I pray first before they pray. Hmm? Do you know the prayers I'm talking about? We cover the driver with the blood of Jesus. We wipe the windscreen with the blood of Jesus. We re-lubricate the tires with the blood of Jesus. We retard the road from here to our destination with the blood of Jesus. Are you following this? What else? And then we wipe the eyes of the driver to be clear with the blood of Jesus. And when they are done with that wonderful prayer, you hear everybody shouting, blood of Jesus. And they say amen. And everybody goes on the journey. As wonderful as that will seem, there are certain things I know I will not have time to tell you, but just take note of this. The believer in Christ has absolutely nothing to do with the blood. You don't have access to the blood. You know why? According to the law and according to the operation of redemption, only the high priest has access to the blood. All following this? According to scriptures, if you read Hebrews, this is very clear. It is the high priest who takes the blood, not the priest. And you know scripture says that we are priests and kings unto God. We are not high priests. We have a high priest. And who is that? Jesus. And scripture says he has entered into a tabernacle in heaven. Something in the likeness of what Moses did. But he went to the real one. And it says, not with the blood of bulls and calves and other animals, but with his own blood. And scripture says, once 
and for all a perfect sacrifice that does not need to be done again because according to the law the high priest will need to offer that sacrifice every year but jesus took blood once and for all went into the temple offered it for you and i so that we can have redemption is somebody still here i pray you get this so i checked the greek word used there and i realized that that word can be very confusing and that's why many people read this scripture and misinterpret it and they overcame him by the blood of the lamb the word by there in the original greek it actually means the result of more correctly because of so if we were to read the scripture in the light of what is actually trying to tell us the reason why we overcome is because of the blood of the lamb are we still here Another way to rephrase it is that we can only overcome because of what Jesus has done. Are we still here? If not for that victory, overcoming is not possible. Then he says, and by the word of their testimony. The word there is the word logos, right? And it simply describes, it says word of the testimony. It simply describes, or let me rephrase, the words and actions that were carried out on account of the blood of the lamb so permit me to rephrase it this way and i want you to see this it's basically trying to tell you that it is what you do with what jesus has done that will cause you to overcome what you say think and do and the life you live on account of what jesus has come has done rather that will help you to overcome so the basic strength of every christian is you must know what jesus has done Without that understanding, you can't overcome. The warfare of the believer is not a fight to obtain victory. No, it's a fight to maintain victory. You know why? Because we have victory already. We're not fighting the devil with the tension of our hands so that I can be free. No. The fight of the believer is called the fight of faith. And the reason is we have victory already. And so our fight is not to obtain that victory. Jesus has obtained it for us. Our fight is to maintain that victory. So what you do with what Jesus has done is what will ensure that you have victory. So the question that every Christian must ask is what has Jesus done? I was listening to the testimony of Dr. Uh, the Dr. John Akbami, you know, and when he shared this testimony, I think I've shared it with us. I'm sure you, you must know. It, it, it blew me away. He, he shared how witches came to his room to attack him one night. And he said he went to the window, opened it, and looked at the witches and smiled. And then went back to bed. And then he said something I will never forget. He said, what the average Christian would do when you see a witch, what is, what is the average Christian likely to do? Hey, hey! For those who don't know God too much, blood will first finish. For those who do to some extent, the prayer and the tongues will be at another level. The landlord and the neighbors will need to come. But he said something I'll never forget, and I, and I need you to pay attention to this because God is taking us somewhere today. He said, never in all his life will a witch be what will inspire him to pray? He said, only the Holy Spirit can play that role in my life. Are we still here? Then he went on to say something. That when he looked at the witches and smiled, he went back to sleep. And then he said that that is the smile of knowledge. Are you following this? You can't smile like that if you don't know. <laughs> are we still here hmm. that knowledge is what we're about today it's called redemption paul says before your very eyes galatians you both saw it it was exciting it brought about the release of the spirit it broke yokes certain fleshly conditions were broken because if you go on to chapter 5 it goes on to tell them to continue to walk in the spirit in other words, continue to acknowledge what Jesus has done. You've seen the power of it. It's producing fruits. 
So why now change? So he went to sleep. He said a few days later, somebody came to him and he saw the lady and the lady looked familiar. He said, yeah. He said, when he, the lady now began to share what happened when he smiled. He said, maybe you smiled. There was commotion in the camp. Everybody began to ask, why did you bring us here? Just a person's smile. No, it's not just a smile. It's a smile that is formed from an understanding of what Jesus has done. The Bible says it is the acknowledging of these things that bring, beloved, there's a realm in power and glory that God wants to bring his church to. That's when I was told this topic, I said, wow, this is, this, is, this is the heart of God for us in this hour. We've seen glory, but God is trying to teach us how to maintain it. We've seen the power of the Holy Spirit. God is trying to show us what we must never lose sight of. Because when we begin to labor as if it is our prayer that is causing it, beloved, there's a trouble. There's trouble. When we begin to act as if it is because we have read the Bible, we know the Greek and the Hebrew, beloved, there's trouble. Because nothing that we can do can achieve this victory. It is what Jesus has done. So we go back meditating on it. We go back thinking on it. We go back speaking about it. We go back allowing that revelation to change our mindset. So that when we are confronted with the things that Jesus has redeemed us from, we'll be able to stand firm and say, yeah, thank you, Jesus. We have the victory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Is somebody still here? So let's begin now. Let's understand. Redemption, we said, describes the legal transaction upon which our salvation is based. And it required the shedding of blood. If our scripture says that without the shedding of blood, there can't be remission of sins. So the legal ground for that, for that, for that transaction is what we're about. So let's understand it a little bit more. This is what used to happen in those days. When a slave, in fact, I think it's better we read it. Hmm? Are, are we okay? Right? Please stay with me because there's so much that I want to say at the same time. I want to ensure I finish today. Praise God. So let's see. Titus chapter 2 from verse 11. It says, for the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world, looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of our great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Verse 14 is what I want you to see. Talking about Jesus, it says, who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from what? what? What are we being redeemed from? All iniquity and to do what? Purify unto himself a peculiar people zealous for good works. So our redemption is primarily for what? Iniquity. The word redeem there, in fact the basic Greek word that is used for redemption or redeem is the word lutro. L-U-T-R-O-O. Lutro. And this is what it means. To release a captive upon the receipt of a ransom. Very interesting word. To release a captive upon the receipt of a ransom. To liberate by the payment of a ransom. So these are the things involved in redemption according to this definition. Number one, there is a captive. That captive has been caught and made a slave by another. I will follow in this. Then there is a slave market where these captives are sold. And then there is a buyer who comes to this market to buy the slaves and takes them as his personal possession. The word lutro actually means the going forth into a slave market to buy a slave, not just to buy a slave, but to buy his freedom by the payments that is required. Are we still here? 
Why is this important? Very, 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 very important things are, are, are talked about here. And that is the first thing, the fact that man must understand that by reason of sin, we are slaves. Did you hear what I just said? Hmm. Sin makes man a slave. And Jesus was careful to explain this perfectly in Romans chapter 8. Sorry, John chapter 8. And this is what it says. We'll come back to titles. I just need you to understand all the parties involved in this drama or in this transaction rather. And all the parties involved play a major role in helping you understand redemption. The first is that they are slaves. John 8 from verse 32. And if you have the NIV, I really appreciate. The NIV uses the, the exact words that I want. All right. Then you will know the truth, and it says, the truth will do what? Set you free. They now answered him, we are Abraham's descendants. We've never been slaves to anyone. How can you say that we shall be set free? Then Jesus now further explained. Jesus replied, very truly, I tell you, everyone who sins is what? Talk to me. Everyone who sins is what? A slave to sin. Now notice what it says next. Now a slave has no permanent place in the family, but a son belongs to it forever. So if the son sets you free, what did he say next? You're free indeed. In this scripture, Jesus is careful to give a clear distinction between two classes of people on the earth. One class he calls slaves. And these people are called slaves on account of sin. Are you following this? It says when a man commits sin, not just has he sinned, but he's actually a slave to sin. He's bound to it. He's, he's held captive by it. So in a sense, we are actually realizing that mankind is under captivity in sin and needs to be redeemed because redemption is the buying back of captives or slaves from the slave market. So having understood that man is a slave, you realize that what that automatically does is that it puts man in a position where man is helpless. Man cannot save himself. Because what is required to bring liberty from sin is blood. And not just any blood, a perfect blood. The blood of one who has not sinned at all. I don't know if you are getting this. So man remained a captive for years, but God established certain order, certain rules that we're going to discover shortly. And that is that he, he established a form of, some form of relief for man through animal sacrifices. So bulls and calves and goats were killed with the intention of offering some temporary relief to man. Scripture says they had to be offered yearly in order to bring some form of forgiveness to man. So God can deal with man again. But scripture says that the blood of bulls and goats could never take away sin. Praise God. So the slavery was serious. Man, the slave to sin. Praise God. The next thing I want you to understand in this, in this slave market is that According to what is referred to as the law of king's man redeemer. You find this in Leviticus chapter 25. Hmm? Like I said, there's so much to say. But I know that Reverend Kess will touch on the things that I'm not able to look at. But if you go back and check Revelations, sorry, uh, Leviticus 25, it explains in some details, right, what the law of the king's man redeemer implies and why the only person that could bring redemption to mankind was Jesus or the Lord himself, right? And I will explain very shortly. So we said man is a slave, sold in a slave market, bound to sin and unable to free himself. So at some point, somebody will need to come to that market and pay the ransom 
for his freedom according to divine order, according to divine justice. So this is how it played out. Let's just quickly see Leviticus. I pray I don't spend so much time here. Twenty-five and I think from verse forty-seven. Let's understand the law of the king's man redeemer. Because not only do I want you to understand that man is a slave to sin, but there's only one person who can bring redemption to man. So let's see. If a foreigner residing among you, he says, becomes rich, and any of your fellow Israelites become poor and sell themselves to the foreigner or to a member of the foreigner's clan. I'm reading from NIV, so it's a little bit different. It says they retain the right of redemption after they have sold themselves, right? In other words, this is an Israelite, sells himself to a foreigner because he becomes poor, right? And he cannot pay up what he owns the foreigner. Now, in that says one of their relatives may redeem them. An uncle or a cousin or any blood relative in their clan may redeem them. Or if they prosper, it says they may redeem themselves. They and their buyer are to count the time, okay, now began to explain, unto the year of Jubilee. I don't want to talk about that yet, right? But I want you to just understand the principle of a king's man redeemer. What was basically saying here is that if an Israelite becomes a slave, right, and he's owing a foreigner, he cannot pay, it says that Israelite would need to be bought back. His freedom will need to be bought. And the only way to accomplish that is that a relative, it says maybe an uncle or a close relative or a cousin or a blood relative from the same clan can now go and buy him back. You will see this clearly described in the case of, is it Ruth? Yes. Ruth and uh, Boaz. When Ruth approached Boaz, by reason of this same principle, right, the, the right to Ruth what could only be purchased by the next relative in line. So Boaz says, sorry, I can't. We we'll need to go and present you to that relative. If he says, yes, he's the one that has the right to you. And so we, we see that principle being described all through scriptures. So this is the challenge. Who in your family can buy you back? Are we still here? Because the condition is, the person buying back has to have what is being owed and be able to pay, are you following this, to obtain your freedom. Man is a captive to sin. That means the only man that can free man, another man cannot go and pay what is required. You know why? Because that man is owing to, are you following this? So I cannot pay your debt, but I'll still be owing my own. Are we still here? So no human being could die for another that will satisfy that requirement. So the only person that could meet the standard was that God had to become a man. Are you following this? And to die for his creation. But is, is God, I thought it's supposed to be according to the law of king's man, redeemer. Is the Lord our king's man? Oh yes. When you check the genealogy in Luke chapter 3, it tell you how Jesus was begotten of Joseph and so on and traced it. And eventually got to Adam, and it tells us that Adam, the son of God. Praise God. That means Adam came from the lineage. God could actually qualify as a king's man. So God had to become human. Are you following this? Tabernacled in human flesh. In the person of Jesus, came to the slave market and announced, If the Son of Man sets you free, you are free indeed. 
Are we still here? He went to that market. I said, okay, what is old? Oh, you are sold to sin. That's what Romans seven fourteen says. You are sold under sin. Okay. What is required to free man from sin? Blood. Why is that? Same Leviticus. I think 17 verse 11 tells us that the life of the animal is in the blood. And it is only on account of death that freedom. Let's see it. Le Leviticus 7 11. Are you still with me today? Please permit me to teach. And this foundation is very important. Like I said, if you understand this transaction, it will be easy for you to know why you can see the devil and go to sleep. It says, for the life of a creature is in the blood. And the demand for sin is life. Life has to be taken. So the blood of Jesus had to be shed. I says, and I have given it to you to make atonement for yourselves on the altar. It is the blood that makes atonement, it says, for one's life. Praise God. Hebrews chapter 9 verse 22. We see the same thoughts being documented here. It says, in fact, the law requires that nearly everything be cleansed with blood. And without the shedding of blood, it says, there is no remission of sin. So another way to put it is Jesus simply came recognizing that he does not have sin, perfect lamb, and he offered himself. So when he died on the cross, it wasn't just somebody dying, another prisoner. It was a transaction that was perfectly orchestrated by heaven. The only and the most important transaction that can bring liberty to mankind. And that is that what is being owed will finally be paid. Because notice, it says that Israelite is sold. Only a kinsman can come and say, I want to buy my brother back. And God has come in the likeness of man. And he stood on that cross, rather he was nailed to that cross. And he made the most powerful declaration that could ever be made. And what is that? It is finished. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I pray you understand this. Hallelujah. And those words resounded in heaven. Because like I said, it's a legal transaction. So heaven recognizes it. Earth recognizes it. Devils understand it. They know that we have rights only as long as this person is owing. Now someone has paid for him. And not just for him, for all of mankind. Perfect blood. Life has been given. That means we cannot come and oppress this man anymore. Because the only grounds upon which we could oppress him is the fact that he's owing. Is somebody getting this? In those days when Nepa used to come terrorize people, hmm? do they still terrorize? Uh, It used to be very exciting for me because we always paid our bills. So one day without asking, they just climbed this thing, cut it. I was just looking at them. I said, don't worry, you still climb again since you enjoy climbing. Are you following this? Why do they feel they can oppress me and you are owing us? Is it not true? All I needed to do was to take that receipt and show them. Say, see. Not only have I paid, in fact, for what I'm seeing, you people are the ones owing me because I overpaid. And that singular action automatically makes my oppressor my slave. Is somebody hearing this? Now I command him, climb back up, and he obeys because of what is in my hand. <laughs> is somebody getting this tonight? Yeah. That's, that's redemption. That the legal transaction upon which man cannot boast when Satan shows up is the fact that my brother, Jesus, 
has come. To pay what I owe, now I owe nothing. Is somebody still here? Ah. I was reading about slavery. Or rather, learning about slavery today. And I realized that slavery is a terrible thing. You know why? When for a man is admitted to become a slave, there is a serious form of brainwashing that is done to him. They carefully take time to make him see himself as nobody. In fact, in summary, what we could say is that they put a fear in him of his masters. So every day he sees his master, he's afraid. There's a fear that fills his heart. Because as a slave, you don't have rights. The master can easily slap you today for no reason. And you say, yes, sir. That's exactly what is happening to a natural man without Christ. The devil can play with you. Give you money today. And you are rejoicing, feeling like a big boy. And the next day he will come and slap you and you'll be mad for the rest of your life. Hope you know that's what happened, happening to many people today. Because you are a slave. That at the peak of, of your success, just one small action, and for the rest of your life, you are paralyzed or in coma for years. Because you see, humans are slaves to the devil on account of sin. And the fear of their master is daily tormenting them. But let me show you some good news. Praise God. To show you what Jesus did. Hebrews chapter 2 verse 14 and 15. It says, since the children have flesh and blood, are you seeing this? This is what I just explained to you, the law of, the, of the Kingsman Redeemer. It says, he too, Jesus, what did he do? He shared in their humanity. We're reading for NIV, right? Okay. He shared in our humanity so that only by reason of a human dying, because if God had died, it would not have been, been the same thing. So he had to share in our humanity. And it says, so that by his death, he might break the power of him who holds the power of death. And that is whom? The devil. Notice what it says this. And free those who all their lives were held in slavery by the fear of death. Somebody still here? Yeah. By the fear of death. The basic challenge that we're still having today is that there are many Christians who are still being troubled by this fear, even though the price has been paid. Because the, the system of slavery puts fear in the hearts of men in relation to their oppressors. So every time they see the oppressors, they fear. Beloved, this is the only reason why people see witches and they're afraid. It's not because witches have the power to oppress you. It's that you have been trained under a system that makes you fear your former oppressors, your former captors. Are you following this? But when you understand redemption, you realize that by reason of the receipt of payment, your captors has actually become your slaves. Are you following this? They have become subject to you Immediately. But guess what? That fear that was instilled in you needs to be taken out. And that's why scripture says you will know the truth. And the truth is what makes free or sets free. It is the understanding that you have concerning this transaction that will help you be able to face any oppressor. Recognizing that I am no longer subject to you. If anything, you are now subject to me. What gave you right over me has been dealt with. That transaction has been secured. I no longer owe you. Are you following this? I'm now free. Because of what Jesus has done. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. So stay with me. Let me further deepen your understanding. That on that cross, when Jesus was declaring, it is finished. John chapter 19 and verse 30. 
and he stood boldly and he said, those were his last words before he died, that it is finished. What did he mean by that? With this understanding, we realize that it is finished was not a shout of defeat. Are you following this? No. Not that we are, we are finished. No. It's the fact that everything has been accomplished. So if you read it from some other translations, instead of saying it is finished, it would say things like it is accomplished. Because the words that are used here are very powerful words. And I need you to stay with me because I want to explain. Please permit me for always going to the Greek. It's not as if I like Greek. Are you following this? Hmm. It's just that there are certain words that when you read them in the Greek, it gives you a deeper meaning beyond what's the English. You see, English is limited. Hmm? English has only one word for love, for example. But you want to understand love in the Greek, love will, Greek will carefully you know, break down the different forms of love. The love you have for your wife is different. The love you have for your friend is different. The love you have for, you know, other people are different. That's the beauty of the Greek. So it helps you to understand which specific love is the script you're talking about. So in the Greek, when, when Jesus declared, it is finished, what he was actually saying is the word tetelestai. Praise God. Hmm. I need you to understand this. Because if you do, you will see why those words were very powerful. Tetelestai. This, this, this are the meaning. There are three basic meanings of that word. The first is, when Jesus was saying tetelestai, what he was saying is that I have done exactly what I was sent to do. I have accomplished my assignment. This is how it used to work in those days. When a servant is sent on an assignment to do something, when the servant is done, he will come and meet his master and tell his master, Tetelestai. And what he meant by that is, I have done what you told me to do. So when Jesus declared, it is finished, what he was basically saying is that it is accomplished. I have paid the price required for man's liberty. Praise God. Stay with me. Second meaning. I found this very interesting as I, as I studied this. The word tetelestai is also used in relation to business. For example, when somebody is owing some money and he gets the money he's owing, he can go back to the person that he borrowed the money from, give the person the money, and tell the person tetelestai. Are you following this? And what he's basically saying is that I've paid you back in full. Praise God. So when Jesus was declaring it is finished, what he was also saying is paid in full. Not just that it has been accomplished, it is done, but that it is paid in full. Everything required for our liberty. So the devil has no basis upon which to oppress man because I have paid in full. The third meaning is the one that just blew me away. Tetelestai also means the turning point when one thing ends and then something new begins. Praise God. The turning point when one thing ends and something new begins. Luke chapter 4, verse 18. Let's see it from here. And you just love how the Bible puts it. Because these were the words that Jesus began to explain to us. Can you go back to KJV? Hmm? I just needed NIV for a few things. Fine. It says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. Right? And what else has he sent me to do? To do what? To heal the brokenhearted. To preach deliverance. To whom? To captives. And the recovering of sight. To whom? To the blind. And then what else did he say? The set at liberty. You know what Jesus was doing? He was announcing what redemption. That the end of an era of captivity and the beginning of an era of liberty, freedom from every form of bondage. How do I know what it says next? I want you to see. Okay, no. Do, we, do you have um, Amplified? Amplified Classic? 
for verse 19. I will need you to see it. It says, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Do you, do you have Amplified Classic? If you don't, let me, let me quickly read it. Is it even Amplified that I need? <laughs> let me be sure of this. Or oh, message. Do you have message? All right. Please stay with me. Fine. It's the Amplified Classic I need. It says to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. And he explains what it means. It says the day when salvation and the free favors of God. Oh, you have it there. Beautiful. Where the salvation and the free favors of God. What does it say? Profusely abound. Beloved, that's the day that we are in. Are we following this? Scripture refers to it as the, as the year of jubilee. It's the, it's the day, the acceptable day of, of the Lord. The day where it says the liberty of God can become known again in the midst of men. Why? Because of our redemption. Through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. Are you still with me today? Yes, uh, please stay with me. Because there's some basic understanding that every Christian must have if you want to walk in victory. For the first time, I began to ponder on the life of Joseph. And we'll come to it very shortly. I hope you know Joseph was a slave. Talk to me. If I was sold into slavery, we know his story. But this is what happened with Joseph. And when I talked about it, it blew my mind. A few minutes after Joseph stepped into Pharaoh's court, explained the dream to him, this one-time prisoner all of a sudden took upon himself a position of authority. Are you still here? A few minutes after that change took place, if anybody had come in to see Joseph, what would they have said? What is this prisoner doing here, Abi? Hmm. But having interpreted the dream, a proclamation was made immediately. What was that proclamation? The reality of Joseph has changed. He was once slave, but now is prime minister. Oh, is somebody still here? Ah, I don't want to have to go to it. But stay with me so that we won't spend so much time there. And Pharaoh gave Joseph a new name. Just the way the Lord gives you a new name. By reason of your union in Christ. He calls you a new creation. All things are passed away. And he says, all things are become new. Notice, we said that redemption is not just the transaction itself. But the things that now accrue to you on account of that salvation. Sorry, upon, on account of that transaction. In other words, it's not just the fact that tetelestai, it is finished. But understand the implications it now has on you. There's a change that has taken place in your life. And it is that change that is the basis for our celebration. Of a new identity, of a new authority in Christ. And that's exactly what happened with Joseph. So this is what will happen. Not only was he given a new name, Joseph was, the authority that was given to him was such that Pharaoh said, everywhere Joseph goes, every man must bend his knee. If I, I've forgotten the word in the, in the Hebrew, right? And once that word is declared, as Joseph is going, bend the knee, and immediately everybody goes down to respect Joseph. Wow. His former capital, captors had just become his servants. Is somebody still here? Yeah. That's the power of redemption. The things that you used to be afraid of are now afraid of you. Are you following this? 
Because you now carry authority. On account of your redemption, he says, there are several things that you can now enjoy. There are three basic things I might leave with us before we pray. Because tonight, captives are going to be set free. Amen? Yeah. You can't talk about this kind of thing. Things and something will not shift in your inner man. As I say, it's the most exciting thing in the Bible. When you recognize that there are certain things that now accrue to you on account of redemption. Revelation chapter 1 verse 5. Let's see the first. I'm redeemed. I've been bought back. I'm no longer a slave. Because of what Jesus has done. Revelation chapter 5. Sorry, where did I say Oshetone? Sorry, chapter 1 verse 5. Let me go back to KJV. So it says, I'm from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead and the prince of the kings of the earth. It says, unto him that loved us. And what did he do? He washed us from what? Our sins in his own blood. So we know, the, we know he's talking about redemption. Every time you see the word blood used, it's actually describing our redemption. And what has he now made us? Just like Joseph. What has he made us? Verse 6. It says, and has made us what? Kings and priests unto God and his father. It says, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Are we still here? So on account of redemption, scripture is trying to tell you that your identity has changed. You are no longer a slave. You are now a king. What do kings do? They rule. They exercise dominion. They take authority. <laughs> are you following this? Like Joseph, it's, it's like a dream. But you see, within a few minutes, a captive had just become a king. Within a few minutes, one that used to be afraid of every other person now found himself in a place of authority. And everywhere he goes, the command goes, bow the knee. Praise God. Beloved, everywhere you go as a king, there's a command from heaven, bow the knee. Sin bows his knees. The flesh bows his knees. Satan bows his knees. Are you following this? Because everything that once held you captive has now become your servant. Is, is somebody still here today? Right? Let's, let's appreciate the man of God. <laughs> God bless you, my brother. Good to see you. So who are you on account of redemption? Scripture says, kings, priests. You are now in the position of authority. Another way to put it is that you now have a new identity. Scripture calls you new creation. All things, forget it. Pastor, you don't understand where I'm coming from. My family, it says forget it. On account of redemption, you now have a new identity. You come from a new lineage. You are from a lineage of kings. It is natural for you to rule. Is somebody still here? Forget about it. But I was once a slave. Joseph would have said, he said, as at that time, Joseph understood that something has shifted. I just can't be a slave again. Beloved, on account of redemption, every believer seated here, anything that has troubled you before today, it ends today. Because you can't be a slave. Scripture says it's an evil on the earth that you still be seeing servants. Right? The servants that are riding on horses and the kings are the princes. And now being overtaken, it takes a great delusion. Paul says, who has bewitched you? Oh, foolish Galatians. Having seen what Jesus has done, having understood the price that has been paid, are you following this? Having seen the transaction that has taken place and how that your captives can no longer demand obedience of you. He says, why would you go back? And fall prey to that delusion. Are you still here? 
Somebody declared, I'm a king. Colossians 1.13 Not only has your identity changed, your location has also changed. On the account of redemption, it says here, Colossians 1, let me start reading from verse 12. It says, Giving thanks unto the Father, who has made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. It says, who had delivered us from the power of darkness. Who had delivered us from the power of darkness. The word power there is the word authority. From the authority, the domain of darkness. And has translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. It says, in whom we have redemption through his blood. The forgiveness of sins. Redemption changes your location. That if you were once held captive, it says now understand that in the spiritual realm, you no longer exist where Satan can ex exercise authority over. Now you are in the kingdom of his dear son. You are now in a place of complete safety. You are free. Praise God. You are free. Notice, I started by telling you that the way they break slaves is by first breaking their mindset. When they have broken their mindset, they just leave them. They remain like that. There's something I, I saw recently, a documentary of ladies who are sold to, into slavery and they're made prostitutes. It's a terrible thing that is happening. Beloved, God is raising an army again on the earth. You know what they do? They would take these ladies and rape them every day, non-stop. They would deprive them of food, they would deprive them of sleep, and just torture them for days, just one person after another raping. And what they are basically aiming at is to break this lady to a point where she does not have a choice but to submit to them. And when they have succeeded, successfully broken her, then they leave her and send her to the streets. And they know she will not run away. I don't know if you are getting this. Captives are very evil. They, ha they have the spirit of their fathers, Satan, working in them. They are so convinced the breaking process is strong. To a point where they know that she will not go to the streets and start running. They take time to make them see how helpless, useless, finished you are. You can't be free. You continue. And if it takes them six months, they don't mind. They will stay steady. They know that they will ultimately break you. Is somebody still here? There are Christians who have been broken that God is going to restore today. Not because tetelestai or redemption hasn't brought about our liberty, but because there is a mental structure that God wants to undo to help you understand that you don't have to be afraid of the things that once oppressed you. God has given you freedom. He says that this is why Jesus took on humanity so that he offered himself for you so that he would destroy him that had the power of death, that is Satan. So you can be free from your fear of your captors. Is somebody still here? Declared, I'm delivered from the authority of darkness. We had a meeting like this, and these simple things that we just shared, this lady had been battling with, with fibroid for a long time. She said she went home after the meeting. In the night, she had a serious contention. She saw things fighting her. And they were trying to lay hold on, on that thing. Say, no, it can't go. No prayer was, was done in that meeting. But she went home with this understanding. I'm no longer a slave. She said in the dream, she felt that thing leave her. Are you following this? She said in her streets, when she's coming, everybody's telling her, you never stay born, you never stay born. That was her bad. She was not pregnant. It was the fibroid that was big. She said instantly she felt it go. But the, he said she saw a small demon still holding it, trying to push it back. And the demon fought as she, as she woke up and, and went into the sitting room to tell her husband. She said she sends the demon pursue her. That no, we can't. 
But that word kept going ringing in her head. Your identity has changed. Your location has changed. You now have receipts. Show him. He can't cut your lights. Are you following this? You have a right to not command him. Go back up. I said the husband, they both held their hands and stood their ground. And they told that demon, get out of here. When she came to church to share the testimony, we were excited. I somebody say here, we're excited. She said she has an occultic uncle. When she went to meet the occultic uncle, the occultic uncle said, eh, I said, man, that church, when they go now, they get power. Which came to tell me, I said, no, it's not that we have power. It's that we understand the cross. That's the foundation. As long as that is where you are standing, your ministry is secure. Men can go to sleep and recognize that Satan has no say anymore. I told you the story of a friend of mine who used to dream and see himself flying. What a terrible thing. He said for years it happened until he got saved, gave his life to Jesus, became born again, got filled with the Holy Ghost and began to grow on some of these truths. He said he woke up one night and saw himself flying again. Ah! He said he laughed at the devil and woke up and began to jump and said, God, thank you. I'm soaring high like an eagle. Ha ha. Hey, I'm soaring high over my problems. Thank you for the revelation you just showed me. You know what was speaking? That's revelation and understanding. Tetelestai, it is finished. It has been accomplished. Something has shifted. It's a new day. It's a day of liberty the salvation and the liberation and the graces of God he says it profusely abounds he said he began to jump I said God thank you it is finished, it is over I'm swearing high what a new day, what a new beginning what a powerful elevation thank you God, you just showed me he said he went back to sleep and the dream repeated. He said he jumped up and began to rejoice even more. God, you have confirmed it. In the mouth of two witnesses, you have just given me the second confirmation. Glory to your name. He said after that day, he never had a dream. When he shared the testimony, I hugged him. I said, my brother, you don't understand. Because there are people who are still trying to break free from that structure. Slavery is wicked. It first starts with the mind. Once the mind can be brought under slavery, even when you're trying to tell that girl you are not free, it's still hard for her. All her life, she has been told you are a slave. You are going to be a prostitute. Nobody will ever love you. So it takes some people years, some people a few months of laboring to show them the beauty of redemption. You now have a new name. Don't be feeling rejected. God calls you by a new name. He calls you Hephzibah. He now delights in you. He calls you Beulah. He says your land will be married. You are now a city sought out. You are the diadem of glory, of beauty. Everywhere you go, you exude God's glory and God's beauty. You must understand that your days of captivity are over. That guilt can't follow you anymore. From this week, it ends. Are you following this? A new understanding of your position for Joseph, it would have been strange, you know why? Because as Joseph is also strolling, I'm sure Potiphar and his wife one day would have strolled out to say, Who is coming? Are you following this? And they hear, Bow the knee, they'll shout it out, Bow the knee. You see, when they declare it, it's of no significance who you are. The only person that does not bow the knee is Pharaoh. Are you following this? And imagine Potiphar's wife going down and saying, who is this person self that we're bowing for? Beloved, you now have authority. Are you following this? That's why when we become sons, what God gives us is authority. Gives you the right to become a son. Because you were once a slave. Now you have rights. Are you following this? Now you have rights. Now you have dominion. Now you are in a new location. Now you have a new inheritance. God has made all things that you need for life available. He has made all blessings spiritual available. He has made all things required for victory. He has given you authority. 
He has given you the Holy Spirit. Hmm? We won't have time to see everything in Ephesians. Right? Ephesians chapter 1. You can just read it when you go back. I see all the wonderful things that Paul documented. How you've been sealed with the Spirit of God. I see down payments for your redemption. How that God has opened up the heavens and, and made grace available to you. Do you know what it means to be engraced by God? It means that God has specially selected you to favor you. You can't help but be blessed. You can't help but speak of, 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 of a lifting up and not of a casting down. Scripture says that your days on the earth are made beautiful. As the path gets brighter and brighter, such have you now become. Because of your new inheritance in Christ. Are you following this? The one who has bought you back didn't buy you to leave you the way you are. He bought you with the intention of changing your life. Giving you a new identity. Giving you a new location. A new authority. And a new inheritance in Christ Jesus. And so he says we are joint heirs with Christ. We have the privilege of partaking of the beauties of heaven. Even while we are on the earth. There is a peace and a rest that every child of God should have. That it is of no significance what the economy is saying. What matters is what heaven is saying. I walk by a different agenda. Are you following this? A different government is ruling in my life. I have my title to an inheritance different for what the natural man has. Just because of redemption. You see, it's a terrible thing to be a debtor. Ah, some of you understand what it's like. But I have good news for you. Someone who loves you has gone the extra mile to pay the price for you. Hallelujah. That means that you are important to God. That means you are special to him. For him to die for you, right? The price that is paid is a reflection of how important that thing is. Is it not true? There are certain items you don't buy because you tell I see the price. But because it's important, you want to sacrifice everything because I really need that thing. God is trying to say, I really need you. You are very important. Somebody's life has been messed up because of the lies the enemy has told you. That you are useless, you are foolish, you are you have no significance. But I need you to hear the word of the Lord today. That everywhere you go, there's a command from heaven. Bow the knee. The one that I died for is coming. The one that is now king over all, all, all that once held them captive is approaching. There's a sound from heaven. Bow the knee. One who has been engraced with authority to go forth and change the world around him and change his family I tell people that we're in a day where because you are saved and a light in your home your home can't help but experience the salvation of God the oppressions of witchcraft can't come anywhere around your family because one who has been engraced by God now lives in that home somebody's still here somebody shared testimony and said ah, ah, that he just got married and he said ah, pastor please come and pray for, for all the gifts I said why why are you worried about the gifts he said so that you know you don't know anybody can just put gifts now to not scatter your wedding I said ah, scatter your marriage I said ah, why don't you think that because your hand has not touched that gift it has become blessed you don't seem to understand who you are is somebody getting this Another guy will go and cut his hair. This guy made me laugh in school. As he's finished cutting the hair, he will carry broom by himself, carry packer by himself, and start packing his hair. He knows where every hair from his head fell down. He will sweep it, pack it, put it in a bag, and leave. They say, ah, What is wrong with you? Are you not supposed to know God? <laughs> he said, You don't know. They are wicked people. You don't understand authority, you don't understand redemption. Bow the knee. Joseph is coming. The things that once oppressed you, you are now master over. So the man that touches that hair, instead of anything happening to you, it's something that will happen to him. Because it is finished. The legal ground is a transaction. Heaven knows it. The earth knows it. Under the earth, demons know it. That's why when you show up, they run. Scripture says they look around like a roaring lion. You know why they have to look? Because it's not everybody they can devour. Are you following this? There are class of men that cannot be devoured. There are class of men that don't fall under their radar. Stop worrying about monitoring spirits. What are you monitoring? Do you understand who you are? Bow the knee. Everywhere you show up. He says you trample on snakes and scorpions and overcome all the power of the enemy. Jesus did it so that you can see that you too can do it. He's our example. He's our kinsman redeemer. Oh, thank you Holy Spirit of God. That days of liberty are upon us again. 
family salvations will begin to break out again our days oh god where we begin to see the anointing of the holy spirit breaking out amongst our young ones our siblings our parents our grandparents our uncles we're not going to be desiring for them to die no 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 they are not your problem they are not at all don't ever fall for that trap of the enemy recognize that they will be the ones that will celebrate the goodness of god in your life the way the instruments that we take we used to testify ah that that guy we don't know what they happen we know they see him again right we can't catch him we don't just understand it's like something has shifted of course something has shifted you now operate from a new dimension in heavenly places the bible says that's where you are seated it's a place of authority that's why men like smith wigglesworth could see the devil face to face I said, ah, it's only you. I thought it was somebody important. I went back to sleep. Because when you know you are not owing, you don't, you, there's, no, there's no time to be debating. You don't have any grounds to stand. Bow the knee. You are my servant. You have no choice but to flee. Is somebody still here? Oh, let somebody begin to cry out to the Lord now. The Lord told me specifically that there are places of depression. That men have been struggling with in this place the Lord is releasing the spirit of joy in this house man of God the spirit of joy is joy and rejoicing like we've never known before seasons of celebration seasons of celebration seasons of celebration seasons of celebration you can lay claim to it now seasons of celebration I see homes being visited I see generational curses being broken a day of generational blessings are coming on account of you Stand your ground, believer. From the day you become his, the Lord releases, releases angels to go forth before thee. They are on your right and on your left. They are ever before thee, behind and before. To ensure that your way is made smooth. To ensure that all that is required for your victory is obtained. No captive, no, no, no form of captivity is tolerated in this kingdom. Because when God sets you free, He says you are free indeed. When God makes you free, He says no more, no more. That's the power of the Son. He's, Jesus is confident that this work I've done, nobody can overturn it. Nobody can overturn it. It's finished. It's accomplished. It is settled. Rejoice in the victory of the Lord. Rejoice in the victory of the Lord. For great is your inheritance in Jesus. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. He said, The old is gone, and a new has come. Begin to thank God for newness. 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 Begin to thank God for your family. There's somebody that your mother, your mother has been afflicted. The Lord is saying to you, begin to thank God for the family. The hand of God is outstretched for families in this place. The hand of God is outstretched for families in this place. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you. I don't have so much time. I don't have so much time, but very quickly. There are certain ladies I'm seeing in this place. You've been oppressed of the devil. Your mind has been terribly battered. You're battling with the inferiority complex. You're battling with several things. Probably because of certain experiences that happened in the past. Probably you were, you were abused at a young age. Probably certain things happened. Some of you, you've been having several strange encounters in the night. Some things that you don't understand. But I see the hand of God outstretched today. I see the hand of God outstretched today. Are you that lady that you said, God, Pastor, you came because of me today. You came, are you that man? That one or two, three, four persons just come out very quickly. I'll just pray with you before I go. The spirit of liberty is here. The spirit of liberty is here. You can step into new realms in God. The spirit of liberty is here. You can step into a new place. 
I said there are families here that God is deliberately, deliberately visiting. Deliberately visiting. Just lift your hands to him. You can stand up, you don't need to kneel. Just lift your hands to him. Just lift your hands to him. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Just lift your hands to him. The power of God is present. The power of God is present. Your fears and captivity. It ends. It ends. That's the hand of God. The outstretched hand of God. Lord, let these lives now experience what, they, what you died for. Let these lives now experience the power that you've made available to them. Let these ones now begin to see. Yes, that's it. Begin to see. Begin to see that they have been put in a new place. Satan has no power over you anymore. The power of the devil is broken. The hand of Jesus comes upon you. You are his. You are his. You are his. You are his. That means no Satan can touch you. No demon can touch you. No life. finished everyone that is standing out here Lord the hand of liberty the hand of freedom comes upon you you will not be a slave anymore the power of Christ that is working in you sets you free sets you free free and you are free indeed no more would you be a slave to this tormenting work of hell from today you become king you become king out from her out from her Become king. The princess in you. The princess in you. The oppressive works of hell. They go. They go. They go. They go from you. They go from you. They go from you. Satan, you are defeated. Your work is ended. In this life, that's it. It's ended. It's ended. It can't return. It can't return. It's ended. It's ended. Boss! goes from you. Thank you more for mommy. Our strength is restored. Our health is restored. Satan, you let go. You let go. No more. No more. No more. Thank you, Holy Spirit of God. Thank you, Holy Spirit of God. Please go back to your seats rejoicing. It's the hand of victory. God has outstretched his hand. And Jesus is exalted. There is no other power that can set free. What Jesus has done is complete. It's, it's enough. If he makes you free, then rejoice because you are free indeed. Oh, hallelujah. God bless you.
listen, listen. Be it unto you according to your faith. 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 Listen. We are going to shout the name of Jesus three times. Death, burial, resurrection. Everything that has been a contradiction to your spiritual reality in Christ. Every time you shout Jesus, shake up that demon. The Bible says that when the serpent came out of the fire and fastened itself to Paul's hand, he shook it off. He shook it into the fire. Paul did not even bother to check. Did he invite me? Did he not invite me? You are permitted to bite, but your bite is of no consequence. If you dare to bite, I will trample upon serpents and scorpions. So when you shout Jesus tonight, let that sickness jump out of your body. That spiritual gate that Satan has been using to afflict your subconscious, you are going to close it tonight. So listen, 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 listen. Don't get lost in the sound and forget that you are carrying out a prophetic activity. Say unto the righteous, it shall be well with you. The Bible says that by their words they were condemned. And by their words they were delivered. You better open your mouth. When I say, say Jesus, shout it from your belly. If you have been to the doctor before and they told you and gave you a report, I see clouds of glory. You don't know what I'm saying. I don't even have the strength to do what I'm doing. You don't know what I'm saying. And you cannot miss such a moment. You can't miss it. If they've given you a doctor's report, I'm speaking to somebody now. On site, online, we want to tear it. We want to rewrite it. They said you don't have a womb. Who burned that devil? The, the one that didn't have a womb was in the slave market. But I've been bought out of the slave market. On this side, even without a womb, I can conceive. Somebody shout, Jesus! Number two, as you are shouting, that name is blasting and damaging and destroying anything that does not align with the kingdom of the dear son. So you better shout it with understanding. He says, at the name Jesus. So what we are doing is, as we are shouting that name, we are taking transport in the spirit. We are going to that place in the spirit where that name is a reality. The Bible says it's a strong tower. The righteous running. And they say, somebody shout, Jesus! I command dead body parts to begin to come alive. I command blind eyes to begin to see. Wherever there is a demon, I command it to jump out of that body. Every yoke of bondage, I command it to break. Many years ago, I was in a meeting. It was a praise service. And I told everybody in church, I said, jump and give God glory. A sister had poison in her leg. It had crippled that leg. She forgot who was around her. She couldn't walk properly. But she said, this thing that pastor is saying, let me believe Jesus. Forget about the preacher. This last one, see yourself walking out of dungeons. This last one, begin to see demons bowing, taking the knee, taking the knee. The circumstances of your life, we just began the second quarter. This second quarter is about to be a quarter of harvest. A quarter of open doors. A quarter of health. 
I don't know somebody that is there on my left. I just saw a signature in the spirit. You have been having repeated cycles of sickness. Where is that person? Repeated cycles of sickness. Where is that person? If wherever you are now, repeated cycles of sickness. Is you? Is you? As we, as we, as we shout Jesus now. Oh my God. Oh my God. I'm seeing a lady, a lady. Holy Ghost, help me find her now. There's a lump in your breast. A lump in your breast. A lump in your breast. It will vanish tonight. If God called me before the sun rises tomorrow, it will vanish. Are you ready to shout Jesus now? Are you ready to shout Jesus now? You are walking out of that grave. You are coming out of that pit because the price has already been paid. Somebody shout Jesus! Heal, heal, come on now, come on now, oh my God, see fire, see fire, see fire everywhere, see fire, see fire, see fire, see fire everywhere, fire, raw fire. Raise your two hands and begin to give God thanks. Give him thanks. That negative cycle of sickness, it ends tonight. Tonight. That cycle ends tonight. Oh, Rabada. Are you thanking God? Be deliberate. These are the kind of moments where the words out of your mouth are unique to your experience. If you experience God, thank Him. If you feel you did not receive anything, close your mouth. For the simplicity the clarity and the power of your word thank you for beginning this month series with us this next this new series with us with such power such revelation such understanding we ask that you take all the glory thank you for lifting the cloud of depression thank you for restoring joy Thank you for breaking the cycle of sickness and disease. Thank you for yokes that have held people bound that have broken. By this understanding, Lord, thank you for victories that are established. Thank you for Satan. No longer has dominion over anyone in this building, on site or online. Thank you for what you've done tonight. Take all the glory, Father. In Jesus' awesome name, we are praying. Leave her, leave her. When she's ready, she will stand. Lord, we thank you for your servant. We ask that the oil will consistently be fresh. Thank you for your words in his mouth. We consistently be potent. Lord, he's one of the few voices you have raised in our city accurate, dedicated, consecrated. 
Lord, we ask that you preserve him and his wife and their children. Be a wall of fire around about them. Be the glory in the midst of them. The work you have given him to do in this city, let it continue to flourish. Lord Jesus, just like you, when his time is done, he will be able to say that none that you gave unto me are lost. By the teaching ministry, by the evangelistic oil, by the prophetic word, him and his wife, oh God, will lead men on the path everlasting. Lord, every desire in his heart, a burden in prayer that have brought tears to his eyes before this year is over. Lord, let those desires become testimonies. Whether it is ministry, whether it is in any area of his life, let him be able to say, RCN worry, that prayer you prayed, we saw it come to pass before the end of the year. Bless his wife, bless their children, and keep them, oh God. Guarantee, oh Holy Spirit, that they make it to glory. He will not diminish. He will never grow cold. When the devil tries to bring discouragement, Lord, the voice of your presence will be louder. His health, his finances, every area of his life, spirit, soul, and body, and his wife, spirit, soul, and body, and their daughters, spirit, soul, and body, we preserve by covenant. And all the days of their life, oh God, let it be that the kingdom will continue to reap maximum profit. Thank you, Father. For in Jesus' awesome name, we have prayed. Clap your hands and give God praise. Wow. Be seated. Three, four minutes will be done. I celebrate my covenant brother and sister. Always good to have them around, isn't it? Can you celebrate them? Celebrate them. These are part of my family, my brother and sister. If you've not given your offering, please, I believe the offering baskets are going round. I'm just going to do this and then Pastor Mina will come and close. I believe the offering baskets are going round. If you are online or you are in the tent tonight on site and you don't like to carry cash around, you can do your offering electronically and the account details are displayed on the screen here. And if you are following online, media would have posted those account details for you to use. I just want to provide an update on our building project. Um, we are facing some serious challenges with the foundation design. Um, the original design that was given to us by an engineer, uh, there are some queries going around it because of the soil test report that we did that indicates that the land is not as solid as we thought. So they are recommending a new design. That's where the delay is now at the moment. The challenge with the new design is it's going to shoot the budget originally proposed for the foundation. And we are trying to have meetings after meetings to see the best possible option that is safe, remember, we must prioritize the safety of the building. It's a public building. So safety cannot be compromised. So we want something that is safe, but that is yet affordable. So we had to do a second soil test. Cost us about 900,000 again. We are looking at the load points, where the gallery is going to be and all that, so that we know how to re-engineer the foundation. So please, I share these things every Sunday because I know that we are a house of prayer. Pray. Ask God to give the engineers wisdom, give us insight, and then also send us resources. Because you know the longer we delay, prices are unstable in the market. So we are trusting God that we will still be able to get the foundation, at least start the foundation this month. But worst case scenario, 
if we can't settle all these issues, probably by the first week of May, we would have started the foundation. Please let no one's heart be troubled. Let nothing fail your heart. God has given us that project and God will fulfill it in the name of Jesus. So, what are you to pray for? Pray for wisdom. Pray for insight. And pray for what? Resources. And God will show us mercy. Have you given your offerings? Pastor Mina, please. Can you celebrate Jesus? <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. So don't forget, all of our weekly activities continues. Wednesday, we are back at the tent for um, Territorial Warfare by 4 p.m. And also by um, Friday, we are also at the tent by 10 p.m. for our normal weekly vigils. If today happens to be your very first time to worship with us here in ROC and Worry, can you just be on your feet as we make you feel welcome to this house tonight? Wow, can you celebrate them? <laughs> If you're around them, make them feel welcome. Today happens to be your very first time. Still clap for them. Don't get tired of clapping for them. Amen. Amen. You are so welcome to this house. On behalf of our senior pastors, we welcome you to the Remnant Christian Network. So just feel the sleep that's given to you. Once we are done, just come forward. For two, three minutes, someone will just meet with you and will allow you to go quickly. Amen. Can you, as a stick, just say, can you celebrate them? You can be seated. Amen. Amen. Now, um, if you've been part of this house for a while, you know we've been announcing IEC is coming up. IEC is just exactly one month away. Can we celebrate Jesus? Amen. Now, um, we noticed that a lot of persons have kept down their names. By now, we should be getting up to 90 names on that list. Um, so start making payments. The payments, all payments for IEC should go to the Zenit Bank account. Just properly describe it if you're making a transfer. Should go to the Zenit Bank account, all payments for IEC. We have said before that the transportation to and fro is 26,000 naira. So do well to start paying. People, payments are already come. So it depends have paid half and they um, promise to pay by the end of the month. So you can make those payments like that. So we can all, um, we can start making preparations for our logistics movement for the IEC. And we trust that this year the Lord is going to show us great, great mercy. Amen. If you've never been to the IEC before, it's, it's, it's a place you want to be at least once. You, you would never, ever regret being at the IEC. And we trust that Jesus will help us. Amen. Amen. And also, finally, um, if you've been part of this house, you will know that on Tuesday, um, something remarkable happened. Um, and um, as, as, as sons of this house, um, we, we have said it's going to be tantamount to, to a scene if we allow that day pass without marking it. So tonight, can, wherever you may be, can you rise up on your feet as we celebrate our Father? Everybody. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Just can you help me take away this to you for just two minutes? Happy birthday. shouting if you know you've been blessed by this house you will make it better you know you know, you know um, uh, the, the, the truth is it's not because it's a normal thing to just do indeed our father has been a blessing yes yes 
And uh, uh, you know, you know, you know, some of us we came in here as rascals. And um, over time, you know, he has watched us even get married, give birth to our own children. And I know he's going to see their own children. Amen. So you can be seated for just five minutes. I know time is fast spent. It's just five minutes we are taking for your time. Amen. So we will just do this quickly. Um, Daddy is tired. He has been on the road since Wednesday. So uh, we'll just take the short video quickly. Media, are you ready? Um, some of our brethren from outside the nation wanted to wish our father a happy birthday. So we, we said, okay, we, 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 we can allow that and take that in. So are you, are you ready? Can you just turn this TV so that um, daddy can you see it? Okay. So once we do, once we take that, we'll just take pictures. Then that will be all. Then we'll present what we have to do. Amen. Media. Is the sound... Is the sound not ready? No sound. Okay. Is it audible? Okay. Shalom to you, Daddy, and the entire RCM Mori family. Daddy, this is your boy, Pastor Godwin Yakubu from Ghana. It's such a great blessing for me to be connecting with you on such a very special day like this. My encounter with Daddy, God's servant, Evangelist Kessianam Siri in the year 2018 left me with an unending desire and an unending craving for God. God's servant, Evangelist Kessianam Siri is not just a man called and anointed by God, but this is a man refined for this generation. Is a man it's upon your life. It's my prayer that God will preserve you. And it's my prayer that God will amplify your voice to many, many nations. And many generations will live to hear from you. I am so much privileged to be counted as one of your sons across the nation. And I wish you a very glorious, happy birthday on this special day of yours. Happy, happy birthday to you, my father, Evangelist Kassianam Siri. Thanks, brethren. My name is Kahiso from South Africa. I make this video to give a testimony of our father, Reverend Kassianam Siri, has helped me and my family through his teachings, healing service, deliverance services, and all those services he has held so far since I met him. Um, his teachings have helped me to shape my life since I was going through some situa situations where like, it which led me to being bitter, angry, and doubting the love of God concerning my life. But through him and through his teachings, I've come to know how deep and how great is the mercy of God concerning our lives. So he has helped my life. He has changed my life for a better and for a better good. May God continue to bless him, increase him, and continue to give us teachings that are directly from above. In the name of Jesus, amen. My name is Femi Eniola, and I privilege the resident minister of One Spirit Worship Ministry. I just want to take out this little time to appreciate uh, the grace of God upon God's servant, Reverend Kesana Isiri. He is a father, a mentor to many persons, and um, a model to a lot of us. Thank you so much sir, for lifting the flag of righteousness in a perverse generation that we found ourselves. We want to say thank you, sir. Thank you for the consistent labor. The Lord is a recorder and also a rewarder. Our singular prayer is that the Lord will preserve you until the very end. That at the end of your journey, you will have a cross to present for your crown. Thank you so much, sir. We love you. Happy, happy birthday, Rev. Thank you so much, sir, for all you do. Thank you for, for what you're doing in the body of Christ, the voice you are to our generation. We here in London, we are so blessed and I'm so blessed to know you on a personal level and in the, the short amount of time we've communicated together, I've been so blessed and you've impacted my life more than you ever know. 
I pray that the Lord will add many, many more years to your life in good health, in strength. And yes, sir, I hope you have an amazing day and God bless you. This is our prayer to you, Daddy, that you would continually dwell in the secret place of the Most High and abide under the shadow of the Almighty, that you will say that the Lord is your refuge and your fortress, your God in him will you trust, that surely he will deliver you from the snow of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence, and he shall cover you with his feathers, and under his wings shall you take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. God bless you and keep you. Make his face shine upon you. Be gracious to you. God turns his face towards you and give you peace. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. lead us in prayers for our father as we all arise to pray for our father then we'll go with the pictures Thank you. what a great day what a wonderful opportunity let's stretch forth our hands this is a story that the Lord is telling that will be said again all through eternity of how God raised a man that changed a generation Let's pray for him and ask that this one will fulfill his assignment. He will not fall short. He will not be a casualty like many who have gone before him. But this story will end well. This story will end well. It will be said of him, just like the Apostle Paul, he fought the good fight. He kept the faith. He finished the race. And the crown of righteousness that the Lord has in store for him he will not lose it. He will not miss it. The right people will continue to be around him. The Lord God will guard him on every side. He will never, be, he will never fall prey to the schemes of the wicked one. The Lord will raise intercessors from far and near that will continually stand by him to hold up his hand like Aaron and Hall. And his, will never, he, his weakness will, will never be, be seen or experienced because there are those who will be strong for him in his day of weakness, who will stand with him to hold his hand up. Father God, this ministry will never go down. Oh, as the path of the righteous gets brighter and brighter, such will be the testimony of my brother. It will keep getting brighter. The revelation of God will continue to increase. There's a freshness that the Lord will bring to you continually. Despite all your labors, despite all your journeys, despite all your trips, the Lord will bring fresh bread. The Lord will bring fresh wine. The Lord will visit you daily and impact you with such that you need to continue to run the race. Oh, thank you, Father. This one will continue to work stronger and stronger. It will be felt strongly. The impact will be felt strongly in the nations as the Lord has opened unto thee. Indeed, your feet will step on those shores. Ah, and a great light will break out in this land. And many more people will be impacted. Father, we pray for his family. We pray for his wife and his children. That each and every one of them, they come under the shadow of your wings and so they are kept by the power of God no evil will come nigh their dwelling Lord you will keep them in good health they will work stronger and stronger Father thank you for a successful ministry success according to the definition of heaven men will see you and come and lend true success 
they will they will want to pattern according to that which the lord is doing through you men will break free from the limitations of the flesh on account of the work that god is doing through you oh and great liberty great liberty great liberty i just sense the spirit of liberty breaking forth everywhere you go i see the nations opening up i see the nations and the spirit of liberty invading lands invading peoples invading communities and men has been set free men are rejoicing that spirit of joy that you experience today it's going to come in a greater dimension even as the nations open up as the nations open up you will see liberty you will see joy you will see rejoicing thank you holy spirit for there's a special oil that rests upon you. It's the oil of joy and gladness. It's the spirit of liberty. It's the spirit of victory. And so the sword of the Lord is stretched, stretched out before you. And the strong hand of God. And in the days to come, many things will begin to work out that were not working. Many things will begin to align that had stepped out of alignment. For the strong hand of God is before you. And indeed you will see the victories of the Lord. Thank you, Father. We give you all the praise. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Let's shout a big hallelujah. Amen. So quickly, we'll just, we'll just share the grace and, and close. Then for the pictures, everyone will come out for the picture. Not everybody. Those of us who have to join the buses, you can join the buses because pastor has to go home. So can we pray together tonight? Though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, we fear no evil. For thou, the rod and the staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anoints my head with oil. My cup runs over. Surely God's goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. See you on Wednesday. be gathered